bust it. Bust down, bust it, bust it, bust down on the gang. Move first, baby. Yeah, I, I'm everyone's fans. Mama always told me I was gonna break hearts. I guess it's her fault. Stupid. Don't be mad at me, be mad at me. I wanna see you bust down. Ben asked it over on the gang. Oh, it's going down. What is good? <laughs> <laughs> this is Where did you the, shoot that? Uh, it's Friday. Let's go. What is up? Hell oh, yeah. What's up, bro? You know, Forrest is pumped. You know, Forrest is pumped. What's up, everybody? Oh, yeah. It's a good fucking Friday night. Hope everyone's doing a good, you know, Corona Friday. I'm tired of saying Corona Friday. I'm really getting fucking over it. Um, mm. But yeah, what's going on, guys? Why we are here to help you through the corona. We welcome everybody. Uh, can I can I get our song back on? I know, huh? Man, shout out to everybody in the comments, all the all the early birds. Appreciate it. Uh, before we get started, guys, if you support this channel in any way, our educational purposes that we're trying to put out there for people, um, subscribe to the channel, man. Give us a like, give us a dislike, give us something, give us some sort of feedback so we can work with it. Um, shout out to Cold Blood Cafe, of course. Number one, freshest frozen thawed rodents that you can get delivered to your doorstep at thirty dollars flat rate shipping. Okay. You can't beat that, and it's fresh. This is fre it's fresh to death, almost as fresh as these t-shirts. You feel me? For real. Though. So, guys, shout out to Steven. <laughs> came out with the idea because listen, if you knew Forrest Fanning, motherfucker was a hype beast. He loved the fashion. Oh, he loved whatever you know, especially Supreme stuff. So, yeah, that he being didn't really that, like it at all, but that's why it was awesome to do this. <laughs> But still, it worked pretty well, I gotta say. <laughs> he so, liked shoes more. He likes shoes. Yeah, he did like shoes. That's for sure. So we got these uh, Zoo Dream shirts out. They have the they have the podcast logo on the back, so you know it's a you know it's official when you have the uh, unfiltered reptiles po podcast uh, logo on the back. But guys, tonight's gonna be. I mean, what do we do, man? We keep getting heavier and heavier. I mean, I don't. We might blow our load after tonight. Tonight might be it. I mean, I think I don't know. It's it's pretty. It's pretty thick in the ruts as far as what we're doing tonight, who we have on for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Steven and Desiree for coordinating this, and then our special guest helped out a lot with this. But, man, this is this is going to be something help, something super thick and heavy for us. We're excited to bring our guest on, somebody who, uh, I mean, fucker does not need any introduction, no, man. Not. Let's bring him in anyways. Here's Kevin McCurry. What's up, guys? How are you? <laughs> Go ahead. No, finish your song. <laughs> Or is that Jeremy? That's my little Jeremy right here. Yeah. He's making sure he's like helping me to like learn how to spell and count. <laughs> so I at least look like I, I have some critical thinking. <laughs> What's going on, He's gentlemen? Good. How's everything over there, guys? It's it's great in isolation. Ah, <laughs> this lot is of, Kevin's lot dream of, as an introvert. This, <laughs> this is true. I was drawn to be moody and be angry and, and glare at my people. If they have like a coffee that they actually bought someplace, I get all angry at them because they're they're therefore exposing us to their stupidity. We have a contraband <laughs> list that grows. We, we have like no Dunkin' Donuts, no Cumberland Farms, <laughs> nothing but suffering. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you've been like training me your whole life, Kevin. I've been what? Like you've been training for this moment that you, your entire oh, life. Yeah. Absolutely, I and mean, you guys are the sad suckers that have to sit there and listen to me for however long I can. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I can friggin' dribble. Oh shit, listen, Kevin. What's what's crazy about you being here tonight? You know, you're a popular guy, man. I mean, your popularity is up there. Um, you got, you know, you got some good friends that are, uh, you know, that been in this hobby. You know, I would say just as long as you have. I mean, let's ask one friend here, Brian Barcheck. What's up, Brian? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Oh my God! Oh, it's really here. Yeah. Next, but okay. Oh no! <laughs> That's really holy oh, shit. Look at how happy he is. <laughs> what did you guys have to pull to get that dick on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. He <laughs> said uh, it. It's much love, man. Much love, always, man. <laughs> much love. He's all gangster. I'm in my cushy chair. <laughs> I know, man. I you gotta, you know, at the end of a long day, you gotta sit back and enjoy, you know. <laughs> Some, yeah. of us actually, some of us actually work for a living, Kevin. You know, we actually. Damn. 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 I clean fucking mice oh, and there it fruit, is. fruit flies for a living. <laughs> While you're out there pretending you're always happy and you're always on cloud nine. 
That's uh, true. It is true. I, you know, if I did what, if I really expressed my true feelings, I'd be like fucking miserable, like schlep rock. Everything sucks. We're doomed. And I'd have like no followers. I'm like the 18 million fucking followers. Oh, you come have. on. No, man. Everyone knows you're, you're growing, man. You're growing. You're the next fucking wave, man. Yeah, the fucking tidal wave. <laughs> the tidal wave. No, it's good. It's good. No, man, it's good. But no, it's good, man. I'm always optimistic. You know me. And I'm always pessimistic. That's why we make such good friendship. That's Perfect why yeah. we, we neutralize good. ourselves and make a giant zero. Like this. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so good. Yeah, that is exactly. that is true. You know, when we were talking about this earlier, we were like, you know, you guys are, are literally the yin and yang of the industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is it is so true. Like Kevin just fits that like, you know, evil morph God thing so much. And then I, I always like Kevin, do your best impression of me. Go ahead. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. Everything is so great. And I'm feeling sure peachy. And today's going to be a great day. Isn't that so, Lori? <laughs> no, I don't know. You, I, I have to. You usually have to do oh. like at least one golly G. I know. Yeah. I was, I was, I'm sick. Oh, First of all. I'm sitting. I have a guitar with me to help anchor me. But when I want to do you and do all the super hype, I got to be like fucking jumping around and, hey, everyone, with a baby in there and all this kind of fucking shit. I'm sitting here. Look, I actually have pajama bars. Right now. Oh, nice. So That's good. I'm trying to be like, so you guys should actually understand what I'm actually saying and not just going off on some stupid what's tangent. That, when's, when's the last time you've been out of PJs? Two hours ago, I was. I just, I just <laughs> did this so I could be like you and all relaxing. I'm like no, erotic. I think and, I, I like get this vision that Kevin, since yeah. the quarantine started, no. he hasn't hasn't gotten out of his pajamas. Yet. Absolutely, <laughs> fucking literally not. That is so not. The, <laughs> I literally just got out of jeans for this, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna calm down and actually look like I'm I'm normal a little bit. But notice the hat's still on. Oh, I'm yeah. surprised the sunglasses aren't on too. Right, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, guys, hey guys, when did when did this friendship fucking originate? Can we just talk about that real quick? Can we talk about when you guys met, how this was, and how came the yin and the yang? I think that you know, I think that we maybe got off a little rocky start. With the first <laughs> I wasn't a friendship, no, <laughs> but, no. Uh, but uh, no, I think what actually it was like. I, I'm going to say it was probably mm -hmm. like you know, 96, 97, something like that. We were at the uh, ETHS, which is the East Texas Herp Show. And both of mm. us were there. We weren't vending. Either one of us was vending. We were just hanging out. And I remember we went out to lunch with a guy named Bern Bechtel, who was uh, oh, Dr. Bechtel. And, um, and, and that was the first time I ever really talked to Kevin. And, and I just think that, you know, obviously we just both shared an unbelievable passion for ball pythons at the time. And, um, yeah. and then I think just ever since, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think we just kind of hit it off, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't think we've ever been – on each other's bad terms since that no. that moment, like th you know, twenty almost thirty years ago. You know, I mean, twenty something years ago, we've never argued. We've never said anything. You'll never hear me say anything bad about Kevin. Kevin only says bad things. Well, you don't hear Kevin. what I'm saying because I just say it behind your back, mother. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, you know, that was like the early days, right, Kevin? I mean, there was like literally. I always tell people like. There was Kevin, me, and Tracy Barker were the only people on the planet that liked ball pythons back then. And and guys used to make fun of us. I mean, they made fun of me at least, like because they thought ball pythons were because you were short. Animals. You and Tracy were yeah. both short, and I was much <laughs> taller than you. So I was that's, like, dude, I'm gonna tower all over this guy. That's, that's Yo, true. That's true. I'm gonna clip you. Yeah, it's oh yeah, it's ter terrifying. But uh, <laughs> no, it's actually quite true. So it's Bernie Bechtel, and Bernie Bechtel would. Uh, he was like one of the first guys that was uh, interested in like uh, morphology or, or mutations of animals. So he always like, I remember I had an albino scarlet king snake and taking pictures of that. So when we were just first seeing some of these weird morphs and different stuff, but do you remember his book, Ryan? Oh my gosh, I still have it in my office. Yeah. Yeah. So he would, you know, want to get pictures of our stuff. So we were talking to him and, um, it, it, it was uh, it was really interesting. So this was like really at the beginning. Believe it or not, guys, it was a time when there wasn't morphs of almost anything, and certainly yeah. there wasn't there wasn't snakes with two genetic you know uh, mutations in the same animal. There was like nothing yeah. like that. Like yeah. remember, like there was, you know, there's cow kings, there's an albino cow king, albino corn snake, anthracite corn snake. 
that kind of stuff. But there was a time yeah. where it was just we had to go low key and just go for the, like, you know, what it came from out of the wild. Oh, yeah. On. Yeah. But burn to people that don't know about about burn back to uh, definitely look him up. I mean, in that book, I think it was like called color. It, I, like I said, it's in my office. It's like called color variants of reptiles, I think. And uh, it's kind of a, a, a low key book, you know, because because burn back to was actually a dermatologist uh, that just loved reptiles. And, and so he really understood. Whoop! I just lost you guys. Uh, hang on. I just I just pressed the button. Uh, yeah. I want to get rid of you. You're, 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 you're shadowing me. Hey, wait, wait. It's yeah. not working. Get rid of him again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're taking the limelight. There you go. There you go. Yeah, like a boss. But, uh, you know, he just understood. Yo, that's called the hammer. Exactly. Yeah. It's, Yo, and you're just a dope ass bitch. Yo. It's, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Poor Brian. Thanks, Brian. No, 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 no. Hey, listen, you know, I, I, I'm used to it, man, you know? Oh Wait until I do my finishing move from my Mortal Kombat <laughs> Xbox yeah, yeah, headset. Yeah. I know, man. You're the next PewDiePie, aren't you? <laughs> no, dude, don't force me to do a Bay Valley to on you. Now, listen. Do you, I'm going to put you in diapers me, and make you cry. Hang on, hang on, Kevin. Do you, do you know who PewDiePie is? Have you I saw – the only thing I know what PewDiePie is, I watched a horrific video of some person, like, slaughtering people, and he talked about, don't forget to follow PewDiePie. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is PewDiePie? I'm like, what the hell is PewDiePie? And I guess he's the biggest thing on internet, I guess. Internet. Oh. <laughs> Whatever they call that thing. The interwebs. The interwebs. Oh yeah. God. Cutie pie. I'm yeah, like, cutie pie? Who, what's this guy talking about cutie pie? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the thing I, that's the thing I do love about you, though. You are, like, very much not connected at all to the internet at all. Nope. I'm on the dark web, yo. <laughs> I mean, no, when, when you gotta sell spider balls that are constantly corkscrewing you telling them oh something must have happened in shipping i live on the dark web i got the dark web browser and everything dude but spiders are big i send them the mystery box yo spend two hundred thousand dollars on this box and see what comes out and it's a box full of corkscrewing spider ball you take it. nice nice and yeah. i'm laughing my way all the way to the vault yeah, you should see you, you his heard. seven Camaros. We were just yeah, talking about those yesterday. Yeah, seven Camaros. Yeah. Seven of them. Holy yep. shit. Seven yep, dragging them. the mufflers on the ground, hitting speed bumps. My leaf springs are failing. All of that. <laughs> I believe it. They're old Camaros. I found them. In, I bought them on somebody's yard. They were like <laughs> rotting. Out. They're all rotted out. I'm like, yo, but I got seven of these things. I think that the, I think it was the last time I was at your place or the time before there was like a handful of like really beat up cars or something like you're like like what something like that was my what? employee's car that's been here for like three years. But that's <laughs> actually <laughs> true. <laughs> I, look, I'm working on trying to get some status. All right. So the more rotted cars in my parking lot with chickens living on them and in them, the better. But, yeah. you know, if you're looking from a satellite position, you're like, dude, look at all this shit. That guy's macking it. He's got a lot of cars. <laughs> yeah. It's that's all true. about perception. It's not about reality. No, that's true. And, and you true. know all about that, don't you? It, I, very much so. You yeah, like to abuse animals in all them giant yeah. cages. And you no, make them suffer. And you don't give them, I like, do. rubber bouncy balls. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny? Today I, I saw a meme about me, and it was – uh. It was, I can't believe it's not butter, but it said, I can't believe there's not mites and it had my face on it. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. oh <laughs> damn. Literally saw that shit just today, man. Just today. Don't worry. We can pick up some of them suckers on there. <laughs> it's like people that take pictures of my banana ball pythons and be like, look at all the fucking mites. <laughs> God. That's what happens. Seriously. Oh, I can't believe it doesn't have mites. Oh, I love it's it. Serious. I swear to God, I, and I'm not even making that shit up. That was real, man. That was real. Uh, and you know what I always want to tell people is like, I'd like someone to find anyone that has bought a snake with me that had mites in the last seven years. Even yeah. one person, even one person, I'd like to find that. But uh, but you know they they won't do that. They'll just keep making shit up. You know. <laughs> but it was creative it was creative i will say that i liked it you know and it had these big like blown up mites where like the butter would normally be but there were like, big blown up mites 
<laughs> so it, Dude. it was good. It so was, so years put some time into that shit. Okay, okay, Brian, hey, Brian, do you do you remember? Do you remember a long time ago, like when the internet was going, and we were just doing like ball pythons, like pastels and albinos? I got some ball pythons from Africa, and there was this giant mega tick. It was a monster mega tick, and I wrote on it, and I wrote like Ralph Davis reptile, <laughs> and I got this from Ralph Davis reptiles, and I dated it, and I put it out there. And oh, it, it was it was like this big honking disgusting oh, mite, and you could see RDR reptiles on it. Oh my did you God. ever see that? I did. And I think Ralph that, got like offended. It was. Oh, it was, I'm sure. It was a you boss know. move if I've ever. I took that motherfucker <laughs> right out. People yeah, were like, <laughs> it's Ralph, it's it was Ralph, real. It's, yeah. Didn't like Ralph get start get back in, into it? Is he still in it or is he gone or what's up? I don't know. We're gonna get him on the show. Oh, you guys gonna get him on? I'm uh -huh. gonna. I'm gonna. Right. So no. he still, so he still does stuff. I don't know. Who's that? <laughs> Who's, Ralph? <laughs> Who's, Who's Ralph? Did he get so rich he didn't give a shit about ball pythons and was like, I don't need to breed these stupid fucking things. And then... have, like, some medical <laughs> issue and he... Yeah, yep, that's what I heard. So he's like, too good. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm rarely ever this quiet, guys. But I don't fucking. This is just too good. This is. Just... <laughs> But yeah, I think, he, I think he had complications in his sex change. In his ass. You, you know what was? You know what wow. was funny? <laughs> Brian, I hope that shit don't happen to you. Oh, no. Yeah, no shit, man. I tell you, you know. That's how you I, get. Yeah. You know, I tell you, you know, it's funny was that the old MySpace days with Ralph. Ralph owned Ooh. MySpace, man. Ralph was like the MySpace king. I right? think he still owns MySpace. He might still be there. No yeah. one told him it was time to leave. Yeah. He has a top so, eight though. I remember one time I put out this thing on MySpace that said reptiles without the ego because Ralph was so arrogant. Yeah, really? So, really? Yeah. Brian, where and, and, did you just come up with? Dude, you you are fucking, that's blasphemy. I don't even yeah. know what you're talking about. But ego? then the funny thing was, is because I was on, remember I bought that white hog no snake and I got in trouble and I got him. No, I don't there. remember why you were in jail for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. No, I don't remember that at all. She said she was fucking 17. I didn't know. Uh -huh. but, uh, no, Dude, but, a, <laughs> Kip Winger wrote a song about you. Exactly, man. I, she's, she's only a, seven. Yeah. I, she, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, then so he, Ralph came back because he was mad at me for saying reptiles without the ego. And so he came back and said reptiles without the ankle bracelet because he said Oof. I was on house arrest. But I wasn't on house arrest. I just was on probation for buying a white hog no snake you know you know i really i have to exclude myself from all these ridiculous comments that i could fire back with so i just have to be like behave myself no don't behave yourself that's what this is all about man yeah, yeah. i mean come on <laughs> <laughs> i am trying like we have there's a lot of history here and yeah. and, and back yeah. then you know with the ball pythons and there was a lot of um you kind of had to make a name for yourself and you kind of had to play like we were all in the sw same swimming pool and some of them were peeing in it. Some of them were doing worse <laughs> things in it. Yeah. And uh, you really kind of had to maintain, you know, your composure. <laughs> Plus, because, you know, if, obviously if you were too crazy and arrogant, you might not get people to actually buy your product and convince them that it was actually um, an investment. Yeah, but well, it did know, get was, pretty. It did get pretty bad, for I sure. I think that's what was the thing. It was the first time that the reptile community had ever had something of value, you know, where there was actually like money, you know, because you want to pat we, me on the back, Jeremy? Pat me right there. There we yeah. go. Okay. Well, I you know, when, when we first, because when we first started keeping snakes and breeding snakes, there was no money in it. You know <laughs> what I mean? No one was going to do it for a living. I mean, we didn't know. And then, <clears throat> you know, obviously, you know, Bob Clark started kind of with the albino Burmese, but years later, really. If you think about it, really, Pete Call is what broke the the kind of ball pythons open. Where you know it was the first snake that was worth twenty five thousand dollars with a pied, and then that kind of made. And then of course you came out with with pastels and spiders shortly thereafter at fifteen thousand and twenty five thousand. And well, I and came out the, with a lot more than that, Jack. See, no, you're already dogging me, yo. Exactly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, obviously those, but those were the two big ones. I remember buying the first pastel ball python <clears> from you for fifteen grand at orlando and i remember i remember like i know no. I, I remember like going up the female fucking, lemon it was beautiful 
It that was. And, and, she, and, she, and she bred for me for like literally like 15, 16 years. She was a good animal. But, um, you know, not not like the shit you sell now. It's, it's garbage. But yeah, uh, but, they, uh, dude, yeah, when they start rolling around in circles, they can't breed. I know. <laughs> you know, you, you know the first thing you got to do, you got to bring them to the vet and get the antidote. Oof. Do, you, do you know that there's not a day that goes by that someone doesn't call me an animal abuser because of spider ball pythons? That is, that that is welcome, welcome to the club. So so let me <laughs> ask you a question. There, hey, I don't know if you've ever heard of this one. Brian, have you ever heard of a jungle jag carpet? I, yeah, they're fine, though. They're no, fine. No, no. Yeah, they're Even though they're, 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 they're literal. Okay. literal. Yeah. Dude, yeah. They, <laughs> they got it down. Like, I have, like, yeah. spider balls that are like, when I grow up, maybe I'm going to be a jungle jag. But for right now, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to... You're going to call me lefty or something. These things are like, Woo! <laughs> oh, man. Well, that head's so wobbling all around yeah. and bang, 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 bang. Well, that's what's so and funny is those. you see that. Yeah. I actually do love the Jag stuff, but I don't, I don't work with very and much. Uh, and then there's le leopard geckos. I'm blind. Where is that? Where is that mealworm? <laughs> and then there's an yeah. iguana. Wait, put the lettuce in my mouth. I can't see it. And then there's a the blue iguana. I can't see you, but I can smell you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff like that. But you're an animal abuser, and yeah. and Lordy, I I am just like laughing my way to the spider ball bank jack. Oh, I know, and that's the thing that's so funny, right? Is that people are like, all you care about is the money. You're breeding those spider balls, you know. And I'm like, yeah, they're like fifty dollars, you know. Dude, like, I started that rumor on you. Yeah, they, cut, I, they I had to get, dude. I couldn't handle the heat, so I fucking started the whole thing out there. I know and they went after you so bad. Oh, trust me, and I tried early on. I was like, I didn't fucking do it. It was Kevin that did it. Dude, did you hear the you soundtrack know, but, I did for you, where they're playing all the sad music? That was me playing know, that music just know, to blame I you. Know. I know, man. It's unbelievable. The thing I love about some of that bullshit is like I, the, the one I love the best is the one with Lori. So this goes back to like 12 years ago, me and Lori did this skit on, on snake bites. It was a skit. It was like a two minute long skit. How if I got leopard geckos, I was going to kill them all. And then they just took 12 seconds of Lori saying I was going to kill all my leopard geckos. And then they posted it out there. And they said, even his wife knows he's killing all his yeah, animals. I remember that. You know, and, and uh, so, yeah, that's uh, it, it, mm -hmm. it's great. It, I always say it's funny, like all of the negative stuff that people post about me on those videos are my videos. Like, do you think I'm going to put out shit against me? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, you know, it's just so funny. It's like, how stupid do you have to believe that I would put out a video that would make me look as bad? You know, you can take anything. And, it's kind of like the Tiger King, right? I always talk about in actuality, you could have probably told that you could have told that story five different ways. Right. And, and the way that they, they told it just was the narrative that they wanted. You know, Joe Exotics is crazy. Doc Antle fucks all his employees. And uh, and Carol Baskin killed her husband. You know, Dude. I don't, maybe all of those things are true. I don't know. You know but, but they could have told that story anyway, right? So, so Brian, I'll tell you a little funny story. Because after you showed me the link to Pornhub today, and it said yeah. all premium porn is free unless you're Carol Baskins, it actually yeah. says it on Pornhub today. Wow. Yeah. Premium is free unless you're Carol Baskins. So oh my God, that's I, I'm awesome. like, whatever. What? But no, I'm, I'm not even joking. Go. Well, actually, you know. that was. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trapped, I'm trapped and I'm alone and I'm bored. You know? Yeah, th there's no doubt that the porn sites are up like 40, 40 to 50. Dude, it's right so now. great, though. Yeah. If, you know, I'm sitting here thinking today, like when they were filming the whole Tiger King documentary. You know, when they're filming Carol Baskins, oh, like, yeah, we want to know about you and blah, 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 and all this different shit. What was that crazy bitch thinking when that they they came out with a show and they, like, gutted her? And, no like, they shit. she's so – No she, shit. What is the word cringy? She is, like – Well, yeah. That's, like, the well, definition of cringy, you know. Well, if you think about the ironies of that show, though, you know, first you had – Carol that was trying to look like the good person ends up yeah. maybe maybe she might go to jail because they might find out that she killed her husband and then you have Joe Exotic that is so obsessed with getting famous now mm -hmm. he's more famous than he could ever have been for the rest of his life but he's in fucking jail yeah. you know what I mean? like well, how does that guy feel right now he made it he made exactly what he always wanted he made <laughs> but he's, he's sitting in a fucking eight by fucking six cell I, I personally like I'm rooting for Joe because I just think he was you know misdirected he was around you know obviously when your ego precedes uh logic 
And then he uh -huh. kind of got caught up in the machine. I mean, I don't really know how that would exactly play if you're in that kind of situation, but I really feel bad for him. And that, I, that actually do, I actually do too. To I, do, I really do. And, and, and you know, the thing is, is that you think when you get filmed for three years, like I was saying, you could, you could make any narrative you want. They probably have 10,000 hours of him looking like a really good person with his cat. So you know what I mean? Like how much he loves those cats and stuff. And they didn't put any of that in there. Right. They only put the parts that made him look like a maniac. Did you see Netflix said that they have one more episode? Oh my gosh. That'd be dope. They said they're going to No, they're, it's real. I was reading it. Unless, I, unless, I, I, unless, I unless that's be uh, yo, unless <laughs> Pornhub was lying. <laughs> no, no, they, they would never do that. They would no. But uh, I, I don't know if it's true, but Noah told me something about like someone asked Donald Trump if he would pardon Joe, and he said yeah. he'd look into he it or something. Yeah, it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He tweeted about it. Yep, that's Jeff. awesome, man. Donald, I was gonna make a joke about well, you need to go talk to Moses and see what he says Oof. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? He's connected if, to if, God, so can you ask God to pardon him? Could you <laughs> imagine? Could you imagine if Joe Exotics gets pardoned, becomes this huge celebrity? Carol Baskin goes to jail for killing her husband. This that would be like yeah, irony. but okay, but irony, right? okay, but you know what? We let's not forget about where the pollution came in. The pollution came in. He started befriending the only people that were like didn't I guess turn their backs on him because they they hated him in the beginning, which yeah. was PETA and HSUS. And I like I'm I'm really confused by like all his supporters, and then maybe in the the documentary they kind of painted them like they all turned their back on him except for that that girl who's the literal boss for getting her arm tore off, and she yeah, seems she was great, dude. She's she's like you know one of the the best guys. I feel bad for the guy that Jeff ripped off, the guy the monkey guy. Oh yeah 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 yeah, that sucks. That guy was Tim, yeah, Tim was yeah, I want to know more about him because. <laughs> I, I feel really bad for him, and uh, it, boy, what a confusing show! But it's amazing how popular that got. But it's uh, it was wild that it became such a, a, a phenomenon, isn't it? It's just bizarre to me. It came in, it came in perfect timing. Like it came right when fucking people are stuck in their house, and like you, you don't have a choice but to watch it. And Netflix is coming out with all this crazy shit right now. It's weird. Like they're fucking busting out all this like shit that like. I think they're like, oh man, people are in quarantine. We need to fucking bust out the fucking vault, dude. Like, let's, boom, here we go. You know what I mean? So, that's, Tiger King is the, the talk of the fucking Shit. town right now. It dude. gives people some memes to certainly do. That's for sure. There's a lot of memes out there. And, and some Facebook groups. There's some crazy. Yeah, not, none, no, no better memes than the uh, I can't believe this isn't mics. <laughs> hey, is there a dude, link? you should reshare that. Can you there... reshare that, Brian? Yeah, is there a link? You know, I, a link? I it was in a story, so I couldn't capture it without having uh. all the other bullshit on it. I and I couldn't tell who did it. I was trying to click on who did it because I was literally gonna go and like and try to see if I could get it because I would absolutely <laughs> dude. You know, it's it's it, it's it's so amazing, like you're you're just so up there. Like even now, like the other day there was a thing where like they're talking about big breeders and then they like, oh, I hate big breeders. And all of a sudden they, they start talking about you and there's people that love you. And then all of a sudden there's a couple naysayers. They start bashing you and then they interject. Well, cabinet nerd is blah, blah, blah. We like cabinet. All of a sudden here comes, here comes my bastards. And quickly I'm, I'm into domestic battery. I beat women. I do steroids. I got a bad temper. And I, I guess I abuse my animals or something. So yeah. I'm, I'm catching up to you, you bastard. And before, <laughs> it's like, it's like I ordered a shipment of snakes from Kevin, and all I got was these shitty carrying humpback flies. Maybe one day, I'll, you know what those are? Those little fucking oh, yeah, yeah, flies. Yeah. The TT, like the carrying humpback flies. Maybe someday I'll be like up there, like you know, I got an albino mite from Kevin and a melanistic <laughs> mite. <laughs> Talk about I wake secrets. up every morning. I wake up every morning praying that you'll take my spot for the most hated guy in the red house. <laughs> <laughs> I well at that spot. I really do. I think you're, you're making me for it. We, Brian. I don't know if you guys know, but Brian and I tend to probably talk about sometimes once a week, and yeah. we just there's a bit of crying going on to each other. And Brian gets to download. He's checking on me to make sure I haven't killed myself. Because he really wants me to take some of the heat. And if I don't go, you know, and stay yeah, stay I, around. Like, yeah, I don't want to. You, you got to keep anywhere. me, you gotta keep me going me. so I can take the heat. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a tough racket. 
I actually have like 150 YouTube accounts that just post negative comments about you. We knew that. <laughs> we about knew about that. me? All right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I usually I, I usually get creative. I'm thinking about it and going, how can I argue this? Fuck you. <laughs> and then I don't, then I leave. That's it. They're like, wow, he, he's really he's really artful. And he's really have he's got he got that. Have you ever noticed that 99% of the bad comments on YouTube are from an icon or a thumbnail that has no picture? It's and they, they thing. can't spell. Yeah. Yep. What is wrong? With, what is up with the spelling? Like, what is that word? It's yeah. like, I, it's like, almost, I wish I could say it's like ghetto speak, but it's not even that good. <laughs> Brian, is that you? Are you, are you breaking little, uh, those little air things? Bubble wrap? I, I, I got a terrible connection right now. Because you why. suck. And this is, I'm paying, I'm downgrading your bandwidth, mother. <laughs> I'm so edgy because I, I swear. Think it's, I, think it's the, I think it's the headphones. It's the headphones, Brian. MJ, MJ, there's another guys. ten bucks if you can blank them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take that bar. Take your bitch. <laughs> Yo, what are you, a midget or a dwarf? Oh, oh. Hi, Bry. How are you? Oh, I miss you. Damn, that was so close. Damn, dude. It's such and an honor that- being around with you. I know it's great, and by the way, I don't think that was me because when even when I unplugged, I uh, could still hear the crackling. But maybe no, no, not. you didn't hear know, anything. No, 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 that was there's just no static. Now. There's no crackling now. It, it could be. Bro, that I think was it's static. Just, it's, yeah, it's all the negative energy that's around you that causes the internet to go bad. <laughs> I just hit my head on the wall, bro. <laughs> Jeremy, what's going on, Jeremy? Say something, all right? I'm, I'm chilling, dude. This is this is all about him, man. It's hard. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here just to watch the feud, man. I thought he was going to leave Jeremy. me by myself. I'm like, so we got the computer set up. I'm like, are you going to be here to hold my hand? What happens if, like, oh, if this doesn't work? Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm like, I'm like, I'm getting ready to go leave. And he's like, what? What? Am I have to going to do this by myself? And I was like, no, bro, I'll be back. Don't worry. Jeremy, I actually texted you earlier about giving him Adderall before. All I hear is Adderall. When we're doing our <laughs> when we're doing our Twitch, I always hear that he goes Adderall. I'm like Adderall? What? You're on Adderall? <laughs> That's all I hear is Adderall. It does sound like Adderall. It does. It, it does. does. Especially when so, Johnny talks so damn fast. And then I snort so. ten lines, and it really works. <laughs> I can now imitate Brian Barcheck. Bam! Yeah. Yo 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 yo. <laughs> hey, I've actually been trying to calm down lately. To be honest with you, I am. I'm, I'm like, you need, you I need one of these if level. you could fucking play, you need, yo. You, you hear this? Down. Bam! Bam! Mad me. sweets. Yeah. Ryan, what do you mean by? It's got too many strings for me. I need four strings. What do you mean yeah, by? He cor- plays bass. That's what do you mean right. By cor- I do. Down, Brian? What do you Not mean very by- well, but I play it. What do you mean by calm down, Brian? Actually, you know what's funny is that a a a a, a, a picture from my. Rock days surfaced about a month ago when I was like 16 Ooh, from years sponge? old. No, big I, hair, I, I, yeah, big, yeah, big hair, folks. This this was actually from a band called Cemetery, and it was like a death metal. So I was like, I had bleach blonde hair, upside down crosses on my face, a spandex, the whole shot. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and that got posted on the internet. Not, not. It didn't say I had mites or anything like that. It was actually, just like, oh, dude, you like guys that. killed live mites on stage, didn't you? As part of one of your yeah, bloodletting yeah. sacrifices. Did you hear something? Did, uh, hey, MJ, you probably heard this with Miguel, right? When he was what? with Ozzy, Ozzy said if a snake bit him, he'd bite his head off or something like that. Oh, like, oh, did you hear this story? Bite yeah, the Kevin, that, head off. Yeah, Miguel like, sold Ozzy to snake. Heard that. Yeah, he said, oh, he'll bite the fucker's head off. He's like, it's okay. I'll bite the fucker's yeah, head off. There? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Did you hear that story? No. About, uh, about Miguel selling Ozzy a snake? That's crazy. No. Yeah. Does Ozzy even know what a snake still that. is? Dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently. I, I don't know. But yeah. I don't know. Oh, no, check this out. But that's Ozzy, a pretty cool story. I, I was jealous as shit of Miguel for that one. He's turned the he's turned from the bet. Uh, he's he's turned a corner for the for the best. Like, like Kevin's just silent. Part? Wait, can you guys hear me? Silent. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Brian can't hear oh, MJ. I don't hear MJ. See, that's that's the fucking problem. Don't don't worry, don't worry, guys. It doesn't anyway, matter. It right. doesn't, we don't care if Brian can hear anything. That can guy. You, are you the there? Guys, busy down spider balls. All I hear is you, Kevin. I don't hear anyone else. Dude, that's because I'm a boss. <laughs> I am eclipsing you, my frail little burnt out staff. 
<laughs> Yo, you just you were bright one day, but now it's starting to fizzle as you build these giant cages with no enrichment and you abuse yeah. animals all day with all your shake and bake mites. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> so true. Where'd the rest of the people go? We're we're now we're doing it alone. I they're, guess. they're like, you know, what kind of Brian has a lot. Pod is this? What kind of what do you call this? A video podcast? <laughs> what is this thing? Live stream. A live a stream. podcast. Live stream. But but I can see MJ. I could I could see MJ like talking. I can see everyone else talking. But I don't know if I can hear anybody I, except us. But you can't hear us. See, yeah, this is bizarre right. can, because Kevin, Kevin is a noisy, yeah, we can, we can noisy, hear him, Brian. noisy. Hey, right, Brian, tell, hey, tell Brian to log off and log back in. Someone text him. Brian, get the fuck out yeah, of here Brian, for a second and then come you, back. You suck oh, yeah, and fine. send me 20 bucks on PayPal and I might let you come back. <laughs> 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 Yo, I'm thinking, you know, hey, message him. All right, 40 oh, yeah. bucks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Will, Will Nace is sending me these don't get. Too hot. Do they know? They don't get too hit, Will. Hey, Jeremy, can you make sure you, ten, you PayPal's me that $10, please? Yeah, I got you. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. You, what? You want a commission? So I already owe you. I already owe you 10 and 5 for shutting him up because he was annoying me. Dude. Okay. So when he. Okay. Oh, hold on. So hey. when, when, when he starts. So, so when he starts like sounding like smart or anything, I want, I want like technical difficulties, like static, everything. <laughs> And you then put, put like an upside down ball python there. You might put effects. <laughs> you might put like effects and stuff like that. When you uh, I absolutely like old internet connect sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember Netflix? Oh, what was it? What was it called? AOL. 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 Oh, yeah, he's still he's still on AOL. AOL. <laughs> he, he, really, he, he thinks they're gonna prevent him from getting any uh, malware in his uh, his <laughs> inbox. Bro, <laughs> AOL.com. Are, are you better, Brian? Can you hear us? I can hear you guys now. I'm sorry, man. Woo! I didn't know what was yeah, going on. No, you're not lagging. Yeah, now I hear everybody. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi, Brian. Hey, right, so we were, we were talking about me, me, uh, Miguel and the Ozzy Osbourne thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Ozzy, uh, Ozzy did say, I'll bite the fucker's head off. That's that's exactly what he told me, go. <laughs> uh, end quote. I'll bite the fucker's head off. Did Sharon take him back? Sharon's yeah, 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 they were yeah, they good. were all together, yeah. Because that's, that's that's I think she's probably a wonderful woman. And that's allegedly, by the way, just that he she's allegedly, allegedly a wonderful woman. Oh, so allegedly. you don't like Sharon Osborne? You bashing on her? Yo, <laughs> yeah, I, I you, like her. You misogynistic prick <laughs> bastard Brian hates women. <laughs> I said it. I told you that said that Brian Barchek mites and, <laughs> and hates women. Especially Sharon Osmore, because she's an alpha bitch. That's true. Yo, true. I personally am a feminist. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my God. I can only imagine. Yeah, I see, I, I, I stupefied you. You you don't even know. know what to do. Why don't you go I drink know. some bubble wrap or something? Do something I know. Do something positive in your stupid life. <laughs> Why don't you I go tell positive. Lori to paint her fingernails or something? Oh, tell yeah. her she's not allowed out of the house in an outfit looking like that. Oh man, because <laughs> I because I, I want to live till tomorrow. You yeah, know, Lori. <laughs> let me, let, Kevin, you tell Lori that, okay? Yeah. You tell Lori that. See, see what happens. <laughs> Lori likes to talk smack to me, but I talk major smack to that. <laughs> it sounds like an itch, but I won't say. Bitch, but whatever. <laughs> oh man. No, oh, Lori, God. Lori, Lori, and I are, are we we uh we can do definitely dish it out, and she's fun. Yeah, I think Lori's a. You're one of the few people that Lori likes in yes. this business. <laughs> I, I've, I've confused her. Yeah, that's, yeah, she's like <laughs> I've, I've misled her greatly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take long though for her to flip the switch. You'll end up in a tiger's cage. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've been in a tiger's cage. I've been pissed on by a tiger too. And, who has? Uh, who hasn't? And, and boy, I tell you, you, you feel a nine-month-old tiger makes you feel rather insignificant when it smacks you on the head, and you're just yeah, like, actually, "It's amazing." You know, actually, Lori got attacked by like a, a four-month-old, and she's got a pretty good scar on her leg from it. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're literally uh, certainly no joke, and you really have to basically have a rapport with them where they actually. Uh, respect that you can um put the smack down on them yeah 
it's yeah no you you get you get fucking killed by those in a second i mean th- those are no joke i mean you know and the thing that's weird about a tiger too or a lion for that matter tigers are worse than lions though okay. but uh they could like you and then want to kill me yeah. you know so you go well, in there they, like hey what's they, up? And then they, they, they listen to the people on the internet and they heard that you're into abusing animals and that's true they're, they're gonna true. get you you know it's amazing yeah, yeah. some of those ligers that doc was playing with it's like look at that thing it's like a saber tooth tiger or something the thing was giant it's pretty- yeah it's like 800 pounds yeah oh like 800 pounds. God, that is that is just silliness you no know, you, know, you know one thing i won't ever want to fuck with exotic wise is a fucking chimpanzee dude they're crazy dude Chimp- they're, they're- I what was Doc talking about? Like, yeah, you know, let's rip your fingers off or your fingernails or something like that. Well, no, what happens with chimpanzees is if you ever, like, if you're ever in Africa with people that work with chimpanzees, they'll always be missing fingers, uh, every single one of them, because oh. chimpanzees bite their fingers off. That's what oh. happens. So, so what happens is chimpanzees do three things: they bite fingers off, they rip your genitalia off, and then they rip your face off. Well, Brian, that's what orders. happened to you. So I tell you, you've gone to Africa three times now, and all those things have happened. Exactly. I mean, get going with that sex change, dude. Let's go fund me, Brian's sex change after the chimp made a decision for him. That's right. it, no. yeah, that chimp, dude. That chimp. There was no stopping it, and. No, actually, I uh, I didn't have genitalia before that because Lori. <laughs> but it, yeah, actually, right after right after we had right after we had <laughs> Noah. Yeah, right after we had Noah, she's like, "No more, man." She ripped my dick off. <laughs> oh, Nick, she, like literally Whoa. gone. She ripped yeah, it off. It's it's gone. gone. Chimpanzee it's gone. style. Your dick, <laughs> your dick didn't create. Dude, that was a finishing. Oh, that was a finishing move. <laughs> <laughs> how would you like do you piss through a fucking straw now or how do you pee like what, no, what it doesn't just, matter it, it, it just, diapers folks it just it just <laughs> leaks out man it, it just happens. happens it just leaks man just all over the place <laughs> oh, oh man the sound clips that they can get out of here <laughs> is just boy brian you're wrecked you're i, I mean i i look, I look great well, but man. you you know <laughs> Is he a midget? Is he a dwarf? He only weighs 67 pounds. Let's weigh him again and see what it is and all this different stuff. That's true. Watching right now live. And I think our highest has been like 45. Like, and how many are watching? It's, it's, been, it's been with, yeah, this is, this, we're double, we're doubling viewers right now. Just so yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. great. And, and was, we, you, you guys told me no one watches this. So I didn't want to come out. They, they, they don't usually. Well, I mean, if you compare, if you compare to how many people watch your fucking guys' shit, this is no. I mean, I mean, it's seventy-four. That you guys are somebody, but you know, percentage-wise, it's kind of like, oh, Dude, God, it's gonna kill the whole world. No, it's not. We got like four or five people, and we lie about the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. You no, know, yeah. like I learned a long time ago, I can go buy Facebook likes, I can buy Instagram <laughs> likes. So why don't I buy just live stream likes and YouTube and just make it look. Like people like us, add yeah, another thousand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, Brian, Brian hooked me up to that little uh, village in India where they're all <laughs> yes. like sitting there commenting, and I'm paying those guys. That I've totally changed their lives. Dude, I just literally, I'm serious. If you go and buy like 200 iPhones, you put them on a board and you just loop that shit, man. <laughs> You know, Brian in the background's got 200 iPhones. <laughs> Dude, hopefully the iPhone threes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just well. upgraded from my three and a half. Yeah. To a 5.2. Yeah, we had we had a little phone issue last week, so I don't want to talk about that. Lori lost her phone. Noah broke his phone. And yeah, it was a bad day. Your phone's quarantine's good. rough, huh? Yeah, quarantine's rough. Man. <laughs> it's rough, rough. It, it, yeah, yeah. So. Hey, MJ, quarantine is bad. Go ahead. MJ, were they actually expecting us to actually talk about reptiles? Because <laughs> oh, there's a fat <laughs> chance. This is like honestly, this is this is for more. This is this right here is more for me, Desiree, and Steven. I mean, I'm, I appreciate everybody here, but I mean, I don't give a fuck about this. Is for us. <laughs> you know, being selfish. We don't give a shit to our four forty-five person audience. <laughs> we're seventy-four, not forty-five. Desiree, well, seventy-four. I, I heard usually forty-five. Dude, Kevin's dyslexic. He flips numbers quite a bit. It's okay. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm trying to count past forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Kevin. You'll get there one day. I, Des, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it. It's, but uh, for all, like my audience is generally people with IQs below 82, and so I, I, I pick my target audience, and that's it. Hot pockets. Jeremy, Jeremy's like, oh, low shit. IQs. <laughs> yeah. 
Why not? <laughs> and then I'm just here. I'm just here to agree to fucking ball pythons, dude. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been on Kevin's podcast. So I, trust me, that's what his audience is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, wait. Okay, so we did one of our Twitch streams earlier this week, and this motherfucker decided to not show up. So we had the first 45 minutes of, where's Kevin? This is uh, bullshit. Like and we're boss, all like, yo. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was called like uh, the SmackDown showing, like, who runs this shit show? <laughs> of inbred hillbillies that listen from their trailers and i let them play with the hillbillies and they realize that these hillbillies suck oh. yeah hey you hired the hillbillies that's, that's, that's all i gotta say well oh we're not talking about it. that's all they can afford dude spider balls are only like 60 bucks yeah yeah you gotta produce a lot of those things to, to make only the high, that's only the high white ones dude spider yeah. balls 60 bucks shit you do, hey, 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 you're undercutting me. Fuck you. Get, get that guy off here. It's bad, bad intel. That's not true. It's 40, 65 bucks ship from Nerd. Oh, oh, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, you like that. That's power. That's commission. That's commission. Write that down. Dude, I'm, I'm doing, um, what kind of, I'm doing testosterone steroids. It makes me super angry and red. Uh -oh. <laughs> Are your balls shrinking? They're gone. Ooh. Dude, they're gone. I'm halfway to a sex change, and I'm not even a willing participant in that. <laughs> Brian's trying to bring me to the other side. It's like, dude, you can wear like dresses and skirts, yeah. and I get to wear Lori's clothes and hand me downs. <laughs> and, you know, so yeah, I guess I'm understanding it. Oh my God. The price of success. Oh, that's a good Am I clear to come good. back? Am I clear to come back, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, you're okay, MJ. Just look, no more of that undercutting me. And <laughs> what do you got a cocktail there, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> what what's in, what what do you got in there? Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm I'm Mexican, right? So we drink this thing called clamatos. This this is right here. Oh, beer. those are good clam juice, right? No, yeah. chlamydia. That's where you get chlamydia from Mexican. <laughs> We call, we, call, we call it clap in a club. This, this is clap in a club. <laughs> Brian, Brian's favorite drink in Chicago was crop dust. Kevin, Kevin, oh, Kevin this is how you keep the burn. This is how you keep the burn right here. You drink this. It's always going to stay in pee. Dude, I'm still feeling the burn from chlamydia when I was in Mexico. And I'm still feeling that burn. And I'm wondering what the stink is. is that you? No. no. <laughs> it might still be from Brian's they, dumpster. They, they sent me oh, down. Yeah, Mexico. Sure. <laughs> I, they, they brought me down to do like a weekend show in Mexico and had me talk. And I had to have like an interpreter there. And then yep. people were talking to me because I can't really speak Spanish except for like Matty Kong and, you know, C. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Locos, Hombre, Matty Kong. And they had to give me like bodyguards and shit. Oh. And, and Brian, I did some like glaring at them. Like you just, I have you on my computer with like your children's or spotted python and eggs. And your eyes are all crazy. Crazy eyes killer. <laughs> that was Mexico that was, City too, right? Dude, that kept, yeah, that's where I was. I couldn't step in forward on them and everything. Yeah. No, it was it was really interesting uh, being down in Mexico. They're, um, the people are really, really nice. What part all of Mexico? Three, all three of them. Mexico City. <laughs> okay, Mexico City, nice. How long were you down there for, Kev? I was down there for shit. I I got dysentery. They put me in the hospital. <laughs> no, I, I was there for like a week. It was crazy. We were, we were like driving and we were speeding and we got pulled over. And then you had to like, you had to like pay off the cop. Yeah. That's how they were harassing us. Dude, that's if you how just it goes. Just, just 20 minutes deep in Tijuana, you're going to get stopped by a fucking mask men who are militaried out. They have fucking M16s. If you don't know a lick of fucking Spanish, you're basically emptying out everything on the hood. And I had handlers, thank God. Yeah, and then we were in fucking to. traffic, and these guys come out on the side of the road, and they're telling us to go down this little side road. It's a shortcut. And I'm like, oh, it's a shortcut. You're getting sure. your, your ass beaten <laughs> and, and raw. Getting on a documentary. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it it's uh it it is no. You gotta be careful, down there, man. But the thing is, as long you know, if if you stick to the tourist shit, you're good. But as soon as you venture off into a road or you go somewhere else and you get hit by a fucking checkpoint, that's when you're that's when you better hope you better have somebody speaking on your behalf. Or uh, I I just relied on my handlers and did a lot of crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No one would fuck with me at all. I was like a ball. I was like a superhero, you know. Yeah, incurable disease. Oh. So Mexico, huh? Yeah, dude. You know, first thing you do, you get a whole mouthful of mayonnaise, and then you start let it leak down your mouth, and just oh my god, sick, and they're like, oh, and then you no, look, up, no, look no up. good, yeah. Get the crusty <laughs> shit on your lips, red, like some hot sauce, like jalapeno burns. Simplex 18, no! You start, you start thinking to yourself, why is it so funny? Ah, and then cry, and no one goes near you. <laughs> have, you have you been like, have you been on the tropical side of Mexico, like like Playa de Carmen? Yeah, I went, they, I went up, like, we went up into a mountain, we, we were, uh, those lizards that look like toke geckos that are jammed in the cracks. And I got, I was sick. <laughs> it sucked. We're like, let's go hiking. Let's go up in the mountains. I don't feel so good. Let's go in. <laughs> it's really hot. I think I have a fever. Oh, I don't feel so good. No, it's, it's, it, it's been raining horribly and, and all this shit. And I just did it anyways. I was great. I, I like completely did great. I was eating like the, the bad food. And then I'm like at a, um, I think I was like a holiday in. I'm like, I think it's safe to brush my teeth with the water. Oh, <laughs> oh no, yeah, so it yeah, wasn't. So no, I didn't know. Oh, what a, <laughs> what a fucking idiot. I brought Fladville, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can, yeah, you can buy that shit down there. I like, brought it. I brought can, it, yeah, dude. Yeah, you can buy it at any drugstore. Just liquid Fladville. It's it, great. It, if they it, sell it liquid, you know, it's awesome. No, I took big 500 milligram. I overdosed on it. Oh, shit. <laughs> but I, I didn't totally escape. Kevin cleared out his internal biome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Maybe a little bit. I didn't really want to eat. And then I couldn't sleep because <laughs> I was like sleeping in a, a car where everybody was like laying down. And then there was like bugs. And I'm really high strung and I have a severe attention deficit disorder. So if you're a little bug going, and you're not feeling good, you fucking lose your mind. I'm like, I went and hid in the car because the only place I could keep away from the bugs. And it, was it was really tough. But the people I was with were wonderful, and they uh, did everything they could to to keep us happy. Yeah. Have you guys ever done any kind of traveling, like you know, like Indonesia type shit together? Uh, not together. Not together. No, I'm, really, I, no. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm. Blame you. It's fucking nuts. No, I yeah. I would actually love to do it, but it's uh. It's hard to, to like get away from here because there's, there's so much responsibility. And when you leave, even if you leave in a short bit of time, it feels like just a lot of shit goes wrong. And Brian, yeah. you know, your stuff is is really handled. And it's it's really hard here because everybody here that works here has a pretty good workload and it's challenging. And I'm kind of like the queen bee and I kind of have that eye of like where I can – figure shit out and I see things that go wrong and I sometimes can immediately I can yeah immediately it's magical and annoying yeah <laughs> people people always say you know my crew always hates the fact that I can walk into a room with 500 snakes and find a dead mouse in a cage in two seconds it's, what the fuck is it with you guys Jesus yep. Christ yep. within two seconds I'll open up a cage that has a problem and then I time. and I get to shame them <laughs> Yes. Oh, he that's uh, his favorite part of the job. Oh man, I can't. Mine too. You. <laughs> McDonald's just should take you back. I mean, I try to give you 10 Ooh. chances and nope. Yeah, no, that's that's a gift though. We have a gift for that. Yeah, but you know, you're definitely getting to realize a lot more of that. Uh I mean, I guess maybe like if you are less interested in breeding reptiles, because when you're breeding reptiles, you have to be so I guess on your game because you have to obviously you have to raise them, you have to keep them really happy, and then you have to basically get them to want to breed. 
or versus getting this big giant glorious cages where you can put them in there and it's like so satisfying and fulfilling when you're achieving. All right, yes. what am I saying that's so funny? <laughs> I, feel like this, I feel like this is David Bryan somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's gonna be a good bear. This is definitely the build up. I'm building up to like some <laughs> yeah, shit. Build up. No, actually, yeah. by, by the way, just so you know, my phone is at two percent right now, and I can't plug it because I got my fucking uh, my headphones He's, on. So that means if I die, I'll come back. I'll come so, back. I'll so, charge. So tell me. Back. So tell me about your IQ that would send you to a gunfight. With a fucking iPhone three and a half, only at two percent. When you're, oh, no. when you're with well, the, the, the next boss, dude, I'm I the know. next wave. You're I like, started at four percent. Dude, I started at four percent. So I, 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 you know. I've been getting groomed by Go Herpin, and he showed me oh, all oh, about oh. the proper pet YouTubing terminology. And this is my cute little fabulously flexible blue tongue skin. Isn't he cute? And he goes up and down, and he rolls around. And I can just do that for 20 minutes, and I'm making bank. <laughs> what? I mean, I guess the next thing is I'm going to, like, start playing with, like, kids' toys. Look, yeah. it's, it's Barbie. And then she gets in the car, and then and I can't believe that there's any interest in any of this nonsense. <laughs> it's, cra it's crazy what's popular out there, you know, especially Pet in the animal tubers. world. Pet yeah. tubers. I own 37 reptiles. I bring my reptiles to a vet if something goes wrong because I don't really know fuck all about <laughs> shit. <laughs> and, and, and people are like, and people are like, these guys really know what they're talking about. They got three blue tongue skinks. Yeah. It's it like, is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy because like, that's why I tell people, you know, I work with a couple of vets and nine out of 10 oh. times I tell them what's going on when they come in. You know what I mean? Like they're like, well, I've never seen this before. Well, I've seen it like 10 times. Bro. So, you know, well, that's, that's, that's a pathogen. I don't want to be. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean. But if a fucked up, produced looking snake could be a human, it's that go herping guy, dude. That guy just <laughs> fucking. Yeah. He, look, he looks like a fucked up mutant, dude. There's well, I will something. give him one. I'll give him one little bit of credit. You know, he used my name to build a pretty good following. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So you know, I mean, he's at least smart enough to know that if he could put out a video against me every other day for a month or two, he gained a lot of followers. I can, Jeez, I can grow the balls out of my channel. Brian Barchak, all I ordered this snake, and all he gave me was some stinking mites. Exactly. Yeah, and I can do shirts with black dots all over it, white. Yo, I ordered this stinking spider ball, and all he gave me was these mites. It's true. <laughs> like it's all over my shirt. It's all over my shirt. Dude, I'm, I'm just liking these, these crazy thumbnails. <clears throat> yeah, you like them? I, 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 Dude, it's, I, his, it's his laptop backdrop now. That can, you are on my computer, bitch. <laughs> nice. Nice. You like you, them? You, you, you like and them? Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> oh, good, good. Wow. Well, that's that's good that company weird. right there. That She's manlier company. than you. <laughs> that's true. Well, you know. That's Man, sense. She's manlier than a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Olympics right there. Olympics. Come on. <laughs> But no, thumbnails are everything, Kev. Yeah. You gotta know that. Dude, I, I tried to do like titties and shit, but YouTube wouldn't have it. <laughs> My Back titties, in, but whatever. Dude, you that. know how hard it is to get him to do a thumbnail? Donnie starts coming to me and is like, do a bar check face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it. Dude, dude, dude I, I did titty my titties on Twitch, and I think we got. He's like, no, you can't do that because they're like, they're like, I want to see nipples or something like that. And I did titties, and I think I got in trouble or something like that. Oh my god, dude, yeah, you got. What is happening to this world? What is yeah. going? You, I, you have to. Well, I have to watch what I say, even though I'm completely no, always no. joking, and and Donnie has to like jump in there and protect me. Like censor me because, and that's he, bad when Donnie has to protect you. Oh, you know it, you got a hard it, thing going it on. Is, I'm really bad because Donnie loves to stir the shit, so you got to be really careful about that. <laughs> Ask Tyler Nolan about Donnie. Oof, <laughs> and vice versa. Yo, he's a juggalo. <laughs> I'll throw your ass like a rabid chef, and if your bitch steps up, I'll fucking stab her to death. Oh. Yo, juggalo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You want to go chicken hunting, Brian? No, you don't, because you don't, because, gee, because you're a fucking pussy, bitch. Biatch. Oh, yeah. They need a smoke. Yo, you're too small to go 
fucking chick hunting because the chickens are bigger than you. Oh, yeah. Maybe baby chickens like little chicks and little ducks. Donnie, no, you're a no. lucky person. Or, or, you, you, Jimmy, you, sorry. Jimmy, you're a lucky fucking guy, dude, to work with this guy, bro. Like, dude, oh, hey, yeah. oh, you just... Got- you wait around. You, you spend a run? half a day with these look, guys. Look, I don't look, think Jeremy's I, like, gosh, help me, please. Man, Jeremy. listen. Okay. So <clears throat> there were a few people in the industry when I, I've known Kev for over a decade. There were a few people How in the long industry. Is that? is that 10 eight years ten? old? 10 years. Oh, eight ten years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there were some people when I said I was taking this a job. Decade. Like, do you do you know? Really? A dick <laughs> at decade. Wow. There were some people in the industry who were like, you do know what you're getting into, right? Yeah, <laughs> not me. What did I say, Jeremy? What did I say, there, Brian? Brian, I think I think you said uh, you'll last a month. And- <laughs> no, that's not true. He's like, he wants to take me down. He's like, no, I'm gonna no, have no, 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 Brian, Brian, I, I must admit, you were you were probably the most uh, positive voice as you always are, and you were like, that's that's the place you need to be. That's yeah, yeah and he's like, the great Spider great. Kingdom will be mine. <laughs> we're going down with Kirby at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true it's true oh i was God. hoping jeremy i thought that jeremy would ruin everything and he's done a good job so and, you know, one Brian, and I like- after 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 spending like 10 minutes in your dumpster i found out all the shit not to do exactly <laughs> yeah. he, he 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 just entertained the thought of coming to work for me and i had a Clean my dumpster. Dude, like, get his, in the dumpster. His, his walk-in freezer with all them frozen spider balls is yeah. like now it's getting emptied out. And his typical well, that, line with the customers, well, it wasn't yeah. frozen when it went in the bag before I shipped it to you. Oof. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's still frozen and it's dead. <laughs> oh gosh, all right. Yeah. I got I got a great story. Okay. Oh, gosh. So, so I talked to this this kid years and years and years ago. On the phone, and this kid was pissed, and he got he got a Burmese python from Bob Clark. It was an albino Burmese python, and he said he got a. I'm not saying this is true, but this is what he told me. He got an albino ball, uh, albino Burmese python from Bob Clark, and it had no eyes. And he called up Bob and like, rah, rah, rah. and Bob just goes, "It had eyes when it went in the bag." Oh my god! <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I love that. That's such a boss move. Yo, the thing had eyes when it went in the bag. He was serious, serious, 100% serious on that? I'm not, it's real. (laughs) It was real. And I'm like, dude, where did the eyes go? I guess maybe it was born with no eyes or (laughs) weird I guess. I don't think it like its eyes. But I'm like, oh, it must have like rubbed its eyes off in the bag. That's like that's the the sick. That's the craziest bully move to somebody is telling them a snake with no eyes. I'm not saying I'm friendly with Bob, but I'm not saying. But he was pissed. He was pissed, and he he said it didn't have any eyes, and maybe they just didn't notice it didn't have eyes, or he's lying. But it It was so fucking funny. (laughs) He was pissed enough where I believed him. Go ahead, go Brian. I was, I was, uh, I bought this pair of adult carpet pythons from a guy in Cleveland, a guy named Rich from a place called Animal House. When I was like 19 years old, drove four hours to go pick this this pair of snakes up. It was like two thousand bucks for a pair of adult carpet <laughs> pythons back then. I go there, and uh, one of them doesn't. COVID, one of them doesn't. Right there. One of them doesn't. <laughs> one of them doesn't have eye an eye. And, and I, I get there and I'm like, well, dude, this is like premium cost. The thing doesn't have a fucking eye. And so he looks at me, he closes one eye and he ah, says, our motherfucker. <laughs> no, he goes, he goes, I would still fuck. And so the weird thing is, is I bought them and then I produced them the next, you know, babies the next uh, year. So it worked. Amazing. It worked. Yeah, dude, the last time that. somebody, the last time somebody bought a spider ball and and messaged us that they were mad, it was it was twirling to the right. Kevin said, "Well, when I put it in the bag, you went to the left." <laughs> yeah, so you, you must be lying. You must be lying. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I, I Le- like that. Lefty. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> lefty. Oh my gosh. Fucking my, spiders, man. What did you do to the world, man? See, Kevin, if you would have just fucking not I raped about money, and pillaged, and then it pillaged and raped some more. I know. If it wasn't just about money with you all the fucking time, man. Dude, all it's the about time. rotted out Camaros in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All uh, right. What what else can we complain about? I, I'm still complaining about you. Yeah. Damn. 
it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. No, I mean, I complain about. At one point, at one point, where imports or unless they're imports have always been a pain in the ass. But when did imports really become a fucking the issues that they are at this point today? As far as like you know bringing shit in and you know what I mean? Because I mean, was it always this hard getting shit in that you guys have in now? Like you know, or is it like what was it just like back in the day? Like I just I'm so ser- so curious about that. So what I- MJ is trying to say is because he can't speak. <laughs> no, <laughs> MJ. Make me out, motherfucker. No, I'm only kidding. No, no, I want permission. I could take myself out. I, I'm jo- I was just joking. But what do you mean when you say, like, difficult? Like, are they difficult now compared to before? Well, there's a lot of fucking laws and shit now, right? So, I mean, there's certain things that you can't, like, for instance, retics, right? You can't fucking import retics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what no, I mean? That, that's completely legit. I mean, it's changed so much. And, Brian... I know you just read the National Geographic. Uh, I did. I did. Article yeah. and, and they're talking about ball pythons, and that is so poorly done. It's a, a glimpse. Certainly, it's more of Togo, and they're just looking at certain things. They fail to mention the tinning, canning operations where the ball pythons are now yeah. being butchered. Yeah, and they don't that's talk a, about that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, we, that's the thing. Yeah, if we don't import them as, as live babies, they're just going to kill them all and, and send them to China. You know? And, and so the that's one thing that's amazing, MJ, is when in the heyday when they were really bringing in a lot of ball pythons in the States and we were relying on, you know, new mutant genes and all that, the ball pythons flourished really, really well in the agriculture. The people were looking in them as resources. They would go to sometimes yeah. the same hole to get the same female wrapped around eggs. There was respect in a lot of cases, and they learned that the adults were, you know, very valuable in their ability to lay eggs. And then they were putting more out there, and they were literally building up the numbers. And it was literally like, like a model of, you know, uh, uh, conservation, yeah, sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. It really, yeah. and it's real. This isn't like not true. And what National Geographic, which I think was really rotten in that article, is where they started throwing in, well, COVID. Could have come from snakes. That's a fucking lie. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. That was that was bullshit. Yeah, and, and they threw that in there to to target like people that don't know anything and suggesting that the importation of these animals could bring in the next pandemic or zoonic or anything like that. It's so much misinformation. It's it's very frustrating because they are very biased and they have a uh, they have an axe to grind. Yeah, I was surprised that Nat Geo uh, posted it. I mean, there were some interesting reads in it for sure, but uh, but it was obviously very biased and pushed into a direction. And and they were really citing uh, an animal rights organization that wanted to ban the importation of ball pythons. And so so it was very uh, one sided for sure. And again, what I talked about when I talked about that was the you know, like you said, people on the ground there that are going to make a living. They're either going to make a living farming ball pythons. Or they're going to make a living killing ball pythons. That that's the reality of it. We would right? never hear about the killing of ball pythons. We would never hear no, about that. No. They it, like no. If you were caught killing ball pythons, they used to lay, lay like a rag over it. They would if you were in there like getting bush meat from ball pythons, they would fucking kill you. Those the collectors, yeah. they defended their area yeah. so much. If you're going in there and killing their snakes, oh my goodness, you're fucked. It, yeah, because it, there was value. There was value in yeah, keeping them alive. Money. Yeah. And but MJ, it was very, very different in the heyday. I mean, it all originally started where ball pythons were like they were like the really cheap snake that would just come in in huge numbers. They would go into the pet stores because they were captive hatching all those snakes. And what some of the people would do is they get these gravid females, they bring them in, like Scotty down at uh, Strictly and stuff like that. They were getting these ball pythons and they were putting them in 17 by 17 by 12 styros and they're letting the females lay eggs and they put multiple, thank you, multiple clutches of, you know, females with eggs Mm -hmm. in these bins and they would incubate, maternally incubate these eggs and hatch out these ball pythons and then they would sell these baby ball pythons Mm -hmm. to, you know, the wholesale reptile industry, which, you know, ultimately went to the pet stores and the hobbyists. But they were literally like the cheap little, you know, $35 snakes. And the right. real stuff was like Argentinian boas and Dumas boas and, you know, green tree pythons and, you know, the big <clears> stuff, <throat> black headed pythons and woman pythons and all that. And Brian and myself, we started taking a little notice of the baby ball pythons that sometimes would have weird patterns 
or yeah. of course the classic jungles, which weren't genetic, but were mind boggling with the black, yellow, and whites. Isn't that about right, Brian? Brian, Brian you gonna, yeah, uh, you know, that's once again, that's a boss move. <laughs> I want to just talk throughout everything. All he's going to do is he's just going to agree with me. But <laughs> it, it really, MJ, it was really like that. And I couldn't afford these expensive uh, animals. So I was looking at ball pythons. Like, I was looking at, like, the ball python. I thought was, it was, like, the ultimate vehicle being, you know, a smaller python that could eat jumper mice people could keep them as pets yep. and you know corn snakes and cow kings the babies were you know remarkable with all the color you know the albino and stuff like that but yeah. the babies eat pinkies are too small and they poop on you so i thought the ball pythons were better and i couldn't afford you know all these expensive snakes so i started looking at these imported babies and i started noticing there was some differences with these yeah. animals and i had hatched out i bought some gravid females and i hatched out a really high yellow ball python and it kept on looking at it and i'm like wow if that thing you know if i can make more like that and that's kind of like where the whole thing started with me i hadn't yeah. even read a ball python dude what's crazy to me is fucking you know i when i stumbled upon fucking i mean goddamn legacy that you that you're fucking holding like i mean you, you work with so much amazing shit and it's all top of the line stuff but then after talking to some people like, you know, he, they, I found out that your fucking shit all started with ball pythons. Like, you're a goddamn legend in ball pythons. But, like, you don't really know that when you first come across your page. Like, you yeah, know, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very bad at promoting probably myself. I'm just, uh, I'm like under a rock. These guys help me. And I just do, I'm pretty much always like looking forward to like whatever's interesting me at the time. But I don't really, I don't try to like, uh, I guess, validate myself. I mean, I do write books on them and stuff like that. And, and whatnot, nice. but you know, but the ball pythons. When I was, you know, basically toting all the first, you know, ball pythons because literally it was albinos. We knew of, and those were seventy five hundred dollars. You had to get on a waiting list. And uh, <coughs> Pete had those uh, couple pies he got from Noah, but didn't know if they were genetic. And literally, it was like nothing else. And then I started with, you know, like uh, pastels and ghosts and caramel albinos and super pastels and spiders. And then when we made the first bumblebees, the first time I bred pastel to spider, I didn't make any of the double, you know, the pastel spider. I just made, uh, I think, spiders. So I was thinking, like, maybe the spider, because there was no double mutations. Yeah. Nobody had ever made any double mutations of these snakes. So we yeah. only had snakes with one mutation in them. So I, I started making, like, the first double. But we were not sure that it could both be represented on the same canvas, so to speak. And right. then when we hatched out the first bumblebee, and then Pete Call saw it and all that. And uh, I started kind of like making a bit of a a bit of noise with, with all what that. Year? What year was this, Kevin? I'm sorry, but I want to know exactly what. So I think I did like the first ghost in like 96, and then <laughs> caramel albinos and pastels. When I first did the pastels, I didn't understand what code uh, incomplete dominance was. So the first time I bred pastel, I didn't hatch any pastels. I raised up like these three females and I bred them back to this male. Yeah. And then I hatched pastels, not realizing I had, there, there was like, you know, this incomplete dominance. So I had already gone further into it. And then I was looking at Greg Graziani's table in Florida. And I'm like, these are pastel jungles. And he, he made him first generation. And I was like, oh, my God, maybe he's got like this thing that does something different and all that. But I already named him pastels and all that. And um, it, so like it was really weird trying to convince people that pa uh, that ball pythons were anything. And it was a slow uh, journey and, you know, catching people like, you know, uh, Pete calls interest because Pete was literally the golden boy. You know, right. he he's stumbled on things like the uh the albino boa thing he got the first albino boa he got from uh ty parks no no excuse me, uh, excuse me tyrone from cal zoo excuse me and pete had never even bred boa constrictors and he gets some people to back him and he gets this uh albino boa and he then goes into like want advertisers and starts buying people's pet boas and he yeah. starts breeding that snake to these other snakes and he gets it to stick. And he really took a big gamble and he did really well. And then when he bought the first pie balls, I think he got the first two pie balls 
We didn't know if they were genetic, but of course, you know, you think they would be because a Jack Russell Terrier is a piebald. I think he paid like 45 grand for the two Fuck. Uh, from, from Noah. And uh, the, the first piebald that was uh, in the egg, Pete was getting into the eggs and he didn't really know how to do it. And I was really good at doing that, but he got into the egg and he was like, ah, fuck you ass, oh, it's white or whatever. And he <laughs> fucked with that thing so much, it died. And so the first pie actually was dead in the egg. So it was a lot. There's a lot of weird history to all of this uh, so, snake uh, jumbo jumbo. But I was literally a bottom dog. I wasn't like a, a big dog in any of this. I went to Bob Clark's place and he had so many snakes and all this shit. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I had like my little collection. And I, all I did was I just uh, applied myself. Even Brian, Brian was a boss. When I came in there, he had so much more going on because I started up reading like Colubrids and stuff. Dude, fucking look how bored Steven looks. We're talking about ball pythons. He's not a ball python guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like about to fucking nut off. This guy works 14 hours like days. You know what I mean? So we got to, that was epic. I'm so glad what you just said, but we got to wait. This oh, yeah. Right now. Um, I, I feel you, Steven. Are we good, I'm, Steven? Are we good? Are you, are you okay? I want to be a little selfish right now, Kevin, because you're you're here with me and you know my friends and whatnot, and they're awesome and we love you. But, dude, can we talk about that mangrove you have? The male, the, <laughs> the albino melnota. Is that that's yeah, it? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, very into mangroves, man. And I just, can we just what? How? Like, what is? Like, can we talk yeah, about that? That that was a hard one for me to get. Um, I have uh, I have my contacts in Indonesia and Java that I trust that I'm friends with. So you really have to, I mean, these are two people that I spend a huge amount of money with. I've actually never met them, but I've known them for a long period of time. One of them, I sold some of the first golden childs to. It's amazing. A guy in Indonesia, Tawny, and I sold him a pair of golden childs for like, God, it's like 45 grand. And they went back to Indonesia, get a rich customer. But so, I love mangrove snakes and you know, I have like divergence and all that stuff. So our typical mangrove snake would be uh, dendrophila, dendrophila, but they're, uh, they can be certainly problematic as far as feeding. They want to eat lizards and amphibians yeah. and birds. So the, the really, the good one to get is uh, melanota. And uh, years ago I used to breed melanota and I didn't even realize they were melanota. I think until probably just really recently, I was thinking they were just like dendrophila, but now I'm thinking about it cause they, they got up to like nine foot, and they're, they're melanota, but uh, to get an albino melanota, I was always telling myself, I want an albino mangrove snake. And I didn't want albino dendrophila because there, there are albino dendrophila over there. And I, I, I'm a, I was aware of them, but I didn't really have a strong interest in them because the babies are such a drag. I have like the caramel albinos and azantic ones, and they can be a lot of work. But I, I got wind of that snake and I saw it and they wanted a lot of money. And the first thing I'm looking at it, and I'm like, God damn, it's too much money. It's it's too much money. And that's called the softening move. Yeah. <laughs> that's the softening move. You show me a leucistic king cobra. Damn no, that's uh, way too much money. And then I go and think about it. And I'm like, because I'm like a an absolute uh, reptile freak. I right. just I love these things and uh, I'm like, <laughs> a terrible business person. So I'm sitting here thinking about that, and I'm like send me another picture of that. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I'm like, and they're like, it's a girl. And I'm like, damn. All right. So I got, I ended up getting three pictures and I'm looking at this one picture and I'm like, I'm going to sex that thing in the picture. And I'm looking at it <laughs> and I'm like, God, that looks like a damn male. And they're like, Oh, it's a girl. She's big. She's big. And yeah. And they're like, it's a girl. And I'm like, Oh my God, that much money. But I was like, it's a damn male. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. So I'm thinking, I was kind of like, because you heard me saying, I'm like, it's a, yeah. you know, I'm like, it's a male. I heard that and I haven't slept. I keep thinking yeah. about the damn snake. And I'm like <laughs> talking to my guy and I'm like, all right, I need you to go get it. And so they have to like travel and, and do stuff. And my guy is absolutely, Andre is wonderful. He will jump through hoops for me. He's like my buddy. I love him to death. And right. he makes things happen. So I sicked him on that and he's like, uh, we, we first, we, we give a deposit and, you know, I'm worried about the health of the animal, but he goes and hooks up with them. So, you know, he, he, he knows people won't mess around with him because he's uh, he's no joke over there. 
So he gets the straight scoop and he's like, it's good, Kev. So we do that. And then, of course, I'm aware of the leucistic king cobra, which is causing me like, <coughs> sleepless <Double>. nights. <laughs> and I'm like, it's too much money. And he's like, Kev, you're going to lose it. And I'm like, you, you want? I'm like, offer it this. And he goes, no, somebody offered more. Oh, and I'm like, good. Yeah. Then they're going to get it. That's fine. I wake up in the morning. Actually, I, I get up in the morning. I'm not sleeping well. And I'm like, all right, offer him more. <laughs> I do it. So I'm like, now I got to get this albino mangrove, and then I got to get this leucistic king cobra that I don't really know shit about. And uh, then it's crazy. And everybody's like telling me, nah, hell, no, nah, it's too much. Which, it's which much. one's more rare out of the two? Which one's more rare? Well, okay. So there's no other albino melanota that we know of. Okay. And uh, we know of an, another blue eyed leucistic king cobra. I saw one picture of it. I'm not sure if it's still alive because when I got mine, Lilith, I bought her as the only one. And uh, so I was thinking these are both one of a kind animals, but, you know, nearly the same. But, they, you know, they're, they're pretty much contenders for the same thing. But literally, as I know right now, there are no albino melanotas. And that snake, to actually have that animal in my hands, and it's alive. It looks good. It fucking it, looks prime time, dude. It is, it is Mint. such a remarkable animal. You can see the blood vessels in it. It's actually like, it's definitely like a dream snake. Cause I love, I love mangroves. I, I definitely am going to probably try to help bring mangroves front and center. So, you know, we've already, we've already begun, you know, the breeding projects on Fuck that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, we're, 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 you know, it's, it's in progress right now. And, uh, Ooh. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Brian came out there and got to play with it. I had Clint, Clint's oh, reptiles, yeah. and Clint really hasn't got to, you know, play with mangrove snakes. And Clint was pretty cobras, yeah, pretty enamored. <laughs> and then we had Will Nace out. You, you see this boss move? I'm trying to bring in other. Yeah, I hear, other, I hear. No, yeah, yeah, yeah it's very, <laughs> very player. No. player. Uh, yeah, I, that's that's the only three people that are willing to talk to me though. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only people I can get to come here. And I offered them a lot of money. <laughs> Most people are the only people that are willing to take it. But uh, no, those are those are uh, dream animals. But what do you want to know about it? anything else? I mean, I mean, what, I mean, was this a, a captive-born fucking animal, or was it caught out oh, of the right, wild? Out of, right out of the wild? Yeah, I I was um, years and years ago. There was another albino mangrove, but I think it was a dendrophila and. It came, it came through somewhere, and I think it just died. Because mangroves can be a yep. little tricky yep. to establish them, and yep. uh, so I was a little, little worried about that. But uh, it's missing its tail, the tip of it, you know, part of its tail, and it's indeed a male. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got him eating well, and uh, all that. Uh, so that's good. Like I think right now, I, I have a. Uh, some sunbeam snakes that will come in some point, like a leucistic and albino sunbeam snakes. Sunbeam right. snakes are kind of that's a they're, cool snake. Too. Yeah, they're fucking neat. They're uh, weird. Go ahead, Steven. I'm sorry, I'm being rude. I'm just hogging all the questions. I know you got a lot on your plate, right? You got something you want to talk about with Kevin? I mean, a million things, but I mean, I'm so interested in this topic. Are, have you started breeding this snake at all yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's that going? Yes, good. Good, it's, it's um, good. Yeah, well, uh, I will do, um, blasphemous things with it <laughs> I'm already doing that because blasphemy that's just that's just the way it is i have uh yeah it, we'll, we'll do good things with that it's just uh it's just a little bit of a matter of time mangroves there's a little bit to breeding them uh they also incubation uh takes a long time some okay. of the mangroves are, are very difficult to hatch the divergence have been a challenge where I've, I've had to learn. I'm still learning on those considering, you know, the, the amount of eggs I've produced in my poor hatch success. They don't, they're not like any other mangrove snake on the divergence. And, um, you guys know what those are? Yes. The, 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 I, blue, the blue ones, the Palu Island ones. They're, uh, they're pretty, a pretty amazing one besides the Melanota. And, you know, the one thing that's scary about the melanota and mangroves in general, they like to eat each other. Yeah, they don't, uh, yeah, they don't fuck around. I mean, okay, let's talk about that. As far as breeding them, are you 
are they supervised for the most part when it comes to breeding? I mean, uh, so, so there's been a lot of uh, scared moments or scared pairings. Um, I've had one female in particular that is responsible for murdering two males. Oh my god! And I, that was a really scary, scary thing. And uh, I think it was basically having the male in there at the wrong time and just being really aware where they are at the reproductive cycle. We have this one female, Melanota, and and she's a just a monster, and uh, like she could eat him like nothing. And I'm like, no, don't make sure she's <laughs> full of food, like Jacob. <laughs> You need to feed that thing so that thing can barely crawl, you know. <laughs> okay. and, uh, and and it really it, it is it is a scare. So a couple of times now, Jacob and myself we're like moving around and like I'll come in there and like move the albino, and mm -hmm. Jacob comes in. Oh my god, <laughs> it's not it's not there. <laughs> Jacob came into me one day. He was like, "Did Kev move the albino melanota?" And I was like, I, I don't know. Uh, he's been here. He was here before I was. He's like, fuck. We got yeah, 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 to say anything. I, I, pulled out of, <laughs> I pulled out one of the snakes. I'm like palpating. I'm like, oh, oh. I don't feel anything. <laughs> I'm like, no. It's but nerve wracking, it, dude. Yeah, it, it, dude. Really, it really is nerve wracking. It's probably going to be the same thing with uh, Lilith when I breed her. Oof. Because she, she is a murderous fiend. Like awesome. literally is like kill, 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 kill. <laughs> Anything that comes into her cage, she has like this. It's a snake hook. I'm gonna murder the like literally yeah. goes at the hook is like I'm gonna kill this thing. And most snakes just kind of like will ignore things like that. She's like that time to die. That that yeah. hook's gonna <laughs> die. Yeah, I have some snakes that fucking that. I mean, for the most part, they don't give shit about the hook. And then there's some ones that just for some reason they don't give a shit. It's it just like they want to kill. It's kill, kill, kill. And it's, it's a lot of young scrubs I have that do that for some reason. Um, Real? They're turning around on the hook? No, they're just fucking ready to battle it. They don't give a shit. I mean, like, it's, if like if I if I'm re if I'm willing to use a hook, like I'm better off using what I what I tend to do instead of a hook. Now I use a plastic lid, and I put it around. I put it behind their head, and I I just pick. Oh, them. you're a, you're a, you're a bitch. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, oh, sorry. I, I, oh. I didn't mean. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. I just, I just meant to think it. Oh, oh little baby. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, I think I'm going to wet myself. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let you finish. Go ahead. I'm going to let oh, you finish. Little teeth are like little rose button thorns, and they're hurting me. Oh, it's numb and stingy. Okay, I'm gonna use this lid. Oh, I'm very protected because I don't want to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not doing it for the danger. <laughs> baby pussy. That's what that's called. <laughs> Using a lid on a baby scrub python. <laughs> Dude, be a be a man, yo. Shit, I'm just out. Wear gloves. No. I have no <laughs> what wait, what do you say about gloves? Wear, said, gloves. wear gloves. Wear gloves. I don't yeah, that's, like, that's... like the ones that the women's when they're doing the dishes and, <laughs> and, 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 and trimming the weeds, they wear those little things with roses all over them. Wear oh. that. You got anything, Steven? What? Yeah, Steven, you got anything? <laughs> no. No, no, you don't want to step up with this, yo. And I haven't even got you. I haven't even gone jabroni on you. <laughs> no, we, we're gonna go. We're gonna get jabroni for sure, and one hundred percent at, at some point. Dude, get no one, no one, no Wait, one. What was my question? After, after I just got insulted, what was my question? I, I forgot what the fuck whole point you was. You told about. me how like you tinkled yourself and used the shield. <laughs> and then, <laughs> from Python, just had of an egg, and, and, like an egg and you were using one of those HCF HCX fifty five gallon bright yellow lids. <laughs> With a whole <laughs> oh, oh, perfect. perfect timing. This is perfect. Ryan. Hey, hey I'm back. I'm back. What's Yo, up, you guys? smell that? I knew I smelled pussy. And there we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. Ryan, you go. Is Ryan. it cooking hot pockets or something? That's <laughs> all I eat. Brian, he's called me a bitch three times, a pussy four times since you've been gone. I'm keeping count. So. I am keeping a tally. That's very good, MJ. I'm glad you can count that high. Well, you get committed <laughs> too. 
You get the <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, he's stepping up. Yo, there's a lot of stepping up. I'm fixing Yo, my Yo, dude, the Jersey Shore <laughs> news coming out. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> wow, man. Oh this boy, yo, yo, Ben, yo, you look at his, look at his spray on tan. You look at <laughs> yo, looking smooth. That's the right <laughs> looking smooth guy. Yo, how's your hair product? I don't have hair product. I see, like, it's dude, like, dude, you gotta work on your swole. And you know what? I'm, oh. I'm willing to send you two jugs of moose milk. That's gonna help you get your swole. Cause right that, now you're looking bad. like an epic bitch. With them little tired eyes, <laughs> no girl's gonna be hitting on you. That's if you even like girls, because I'm getting a little vibe from you that the man is more likely to what you is liking. But no less, I'll send you two jugs of moose guns with definite chipmunk testes in there. Yo, MJ, you yo, MJ, do you even know what the proprietary ingredient of moose milk is? I only fuck with badger milk, so no. No, dude, no, dude. We have a whole, we have a whole stable of Canadian bull moose, milking moose. We milk them bull moose every day of the week, and we are getting the most ridiculous protein for epic swole. And you definitely could use some swole because the honeys ain't gonna be dropping no panties or nothing. When you're gonna sit there and looking all week like that, <laughs> oh, yo, yo, Bry, yo, how yo. that, how, how that, how that dozen jugs of moose guzz work for you? Oh, dude, put on twenty pounds of muscle, dude. You're looking <laughs> and so it, go, and it, and it tastes, it tastes great too, man. It tastes great too. <laughs> Dude, every time he's yo, every time he's getting ready to do one of his little film clips, he is guzzling moose guzz, and he's like, gug, 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 gug. and then five minutes later, he's on, and he's got total epic swole filled with testosterone, and and there it is, yo, dude, excellent, looking looking large, kid, yo, MJ. Don't, yo, I got you, kid. Oh, gonna get, you. Yeah, you, you're gonna be, you're gonna be. Uh, we could actually use you as our poster child. Look at this wimpy, <laughs> this wimpy bitch. He ain't got no play for the bitches. Yeah. And then after a week on Moose Guns, we can send you in to oh. one of them fucking. Uh, Keep laughing, Steven. Actually, you know what? We can't, we laughing, can't even send Steven. you to a a bumping bitch party where you could be getting some honey. Because you're not allowed to mingle. So after the COVID is cured, we're going to be getting you mingling. And then you'll be our poster COVID child. See, he's speechless. It's okay. no, I'm going to let you finish. No, I never I finish, kid. Never. There is no finishing with me. Maybe how, do you, how, do you, how do you think they got that moose milk, man? There's a lot of finishing going on. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, Brian, when Brian came oh out, to visit, God. This technique, two or three poles, and it was a whole, a whole, whole job. job. <laughs> There's a whole job. <laughs> you made it look easy. I got, I, got the, I got the technique, man. Been practicing since I was a kid, you know? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yo, Brian, you got a little bit on your right there, right there. Right there. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Steve's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing ever. I'm, I'm loving this shit. <laughs> hey, Des, you What's knew that? that when you had us on, there's no class, right? <laughs> yeah. There's no class. It's bad. Good thing there's yeah. only like four people in your audience. Filtered for a reason. So just. Yeah, I blame myself. I blame myself for the fucking name now. Jesus, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next I, time you're next time you're gonna watch that Twix before you have Kevin on. Guys, listen, I don't think cussing is appropriate. To be honest, we need to just yeah, yeah you're good. right. We need really right. and we should not attack people, even though like we, even the people. We, I just feel like we should just probably keep it cordial, and you know, there's you know, there's kids here. We just want to learn, Kevin. What the fuck are you even talking about? That's some weak ass shit, yo. <laughs> I overrule. Kick him off. Yeah. Go ahead. I yeah, dare you. I dare you, dude. I'm going to be saying you sent me money. Kevin, Kevin gets the pass. You don't, Steven. 
Kevin Yo, gets a good pass. You don't. I'm going to accuse you of sending mites and maggots and all sorts of shit in my shipment. <laughs> I ordered this stupid scrub python, and the thing came out biting full of mites. <laughs> There's actually people in the comments hopefully like hoping I don't recover from this. This ain't fucking shit. I'm just <laughs> I'm being quiet. I'm being <laughs> quiet. That's all I'm doing. So, do you, let me ask you a question. So I know this is streaming. Is like this being saved anywhere? Yeah, oh, this <laughs> is yeah. Be saved. Oh. it'll be saved. It'll be saved. Is this, saved? Is this oh, never man. gonna be recycled? It's saved. And I'm probably gonna I'm gonna probably turn this into my anger management counselor that I have, and I'm gonna see I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to show them how good I'm doing right now. I'm doing a fucking hell of a job right did, now. Did you, guys, did you guys see me with the Cusco interview? It was no. like full vanilla. It was no. like, ah, oh, it was terrible. He Poor guy. He just went vanilla on me. He didn't even realize who he was interviewing. And I just like, <laughs> I just, oh, it was basic. It's some basic ass shit. Like one of Brian's interviews. Because those yeah, are so oh. painfully basic. Oh. They are painful. They are. Trust yeah, me. Because you always have to be nice. You have to be like a little cushy cutie doll. <laughs> I know that's me. That's what I live like, you know. <laughs> Look at me, man. His body Look at me. Like he's stressed. He's like, yeah. dude, this guy, I can't, I'm like, boss. Like, <laughs> Brian, are you reclining? You look, you look kind of angry. I am reclining, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, Shit, that, man. I'm, oh. I'm in for the long haul now, man. <laughs> I'm ready to go. You can definitely see how uh, weak and like challenged he is. He keeps on like doing this kind of shit. Touching <laughs> know, himself. Like, what's he right like, there? That's like a chimpanzee like, move. I know. Start. It's like, what did I get pot. myself into? Don't fuck with the chimp. I know. They'll bite, they'll bite <laughs> yeah. your fucking fingers, fingers off. off. Your general tail you off. <laughs> and rip your hand, heads off. Chimps are no joke, man. Seriously, have you ever been down to. Well, you no got, what? No, what? No they are uh, no Limbani, the little chimpanzee of Mario's. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> nope. I haven't. Oh, you didn't go. You, you're friends with Mario, right? Down at Mario. Mario's. Oh, Mario's Mario's part of Mario. Steven, you, this is huge. Steven, Steven mm -hmm. knows Mario. Yeah, I met yeah, him yeah, yeah, yeah. We were. I was with you when you met him. Yep, and uh, Forrest and I went one yeah, other time. He, he exactly. Later. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. But Mario's Limbani's got crazy, huh? Colorful history. I want yeah, to get him on the podcast so bad. Like that's yeah, like dude. my guess right now. Like, Especially after, dream, his you know, after this, like, how can we top it? Let's get Mario. <laughs> oh, Mario, yeah, he's no hey, joke. Hey, you, you can have me and Mario, and I'll talk shit to him, and he'll melt me in a fifty percent. <laughs> nah, we're good. Fuck that shit. Let's fuck, let's let's, re, let's regroup for a little bit, huh? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> uh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Mario's a good sport. Mario's a good sport, and boy, he he really knows how to make money. Down where he's at, he's like done that very, very well. I have to give yeah. him a lot of credit. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah, I want Kevin. Yeah, when I when I was oh. down there the one time, he he pulled up with he had two G wagons, man. He drove one. He drove, his wife drove one. That that guy has making. Dude, those bank. were Kevin's, dude. Those well, those were Kevin's G wagons. Yeah. Yeah. Mine are like Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what's crazy is like Mario seemed like one of the good guys on the Tiger King, yeah. right? And he was. Yeah. And he was. Yeah. And he was yeah. Best. Like the most normal guy in the show yeah. is like, and then the description of his history. It's like, yeah, kind of like you know. I loved like, when hey, he was I, like, I, I was I there, I did my it. time, yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved when he was like, and hey, what am I going to say that I didn't uh, put that saw blade, the circular saw, and cut the guy's head off? It's like, uh, yeah, that's saw. <laughs> I, I was there. there. What do I say? I don't know. Well, well you know, you know, he's got a good heart because his wife is talking about how they dress up all their <laughs> the little primates <laughs> and so evidently he's, I mean, if you love animals, like no, all kidding aside, like if you really truly love animals and you're all in, I'm, I'm so supportive of people like that. And, you know, uh, we all have to be, you know, stick together because yeah. we're in a day and age where there were, people are so sensitive with social media and they're always like finding some way to make somebody look bad. Like if you open up a snake cage and there's poop in the cage you can do a million great things with an animal. You show a poop in a cage and like that is so reality based, but we're living in such a fictitious, surreal world. It's really yeah. sad. And yeah. that kind of shit can make people look bad. And like Brian, you know, no joke. I love Brian and Brian's my buddy. And I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm forever trying to protect him, which I always am. But Brian loves animals like I do. 
And Brian and I connect so well where we can talk about anything. We have each other's backs because we, our foundation is animals and we just, right. we're in this for the, the right thing. And when I see people saying negative things about other people that do love animals and they're saying in a mean spirited way, it is, it is really troubling. And I, I really don't, I don't like as much joking as I do. We have to like, you know, be on the same page. And I think our industry is so fragmented and we don't take care of each other. We no. sadly do exactly what's happening in the Tiger King where there's people, there's snippets where the people are turning on Joe and all that. And that's really, I think in a lot of ways, it's really sad if those people really are turning on him because they say such great things about him. And then later on, they're saying horrifically bad things about him. And uh, I find that really troubling. Cause yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. And you know, it, it's, uh, Obviously, I've been the, the the target of so much, and, and that you know, literally, you know, honestly, you know, I think it's one of the things I loved about Forrest so much, uh, and still do, is that, uh, and and you too, Kevin. I mean, you two, amongst a couple other people, were the uh, a handful of people that always had my back, right? You know, like the one thing I I always loved about Forrest is that Forrest wouldn't sit back and let people talk shit. And I know you're the same way, Kevin. You won't sit back and let people talk shit about me because you guys know the truth. And there aren't many people in the hobby that would stick, even people that know the truth, that know that I love animals and know that I don't abuse animals. They still don't want to step up and, and say shit. And like I said, I mean, I, 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 I loved Forrest so much for that because I saw him attack people that really hurt his reputation just because he was protecting me. And, yeah. and that's what a true friend is. And that's something that doesn't come along. And I know you do the same for me. And, and there's a few other people, but there's a lot of my friends in the hobby that sit quiet when I'm getting beat up or hang out with people that beat me up. And they're like, oh, but they're my friends too. I don't want it to pick sides. No, I, pick sides yeah, that, you know? that, that, that is definitely troubling because <laughs> silence is not going to certainly help any anybody. And it's literally, you know, it, it's lonely at the top, I guess, you know, Brian, you certainly are, are feeling it. And you, you witnessed that whole thing in the Tiger King, how like anytime anybody was in any kind of position of notoriety or power, there was everybody who was like targeting them and always trying yeah. to like find some way to defame they defame them. And Brian has, you know, Brian is a massively successful reptile breeder who pretty much can, I know can pretty much breed any reptile he sets his mind to doing. And over time, he's decided teaching people and keeping these animals in these big, beautiful cages and going in there and having this ultimate snake collection and reptile collection is like a huge dream that we all dream about, myself included. And, you know, it's an evolution, but there has been so much mean spiritedness that was directed towards Brian, certainly when he was doing um, some of his reality show stuff. And Brian was always, in my opinion, victim of the editing and how they, they wanted to uh, make him look. Or when Brian was first doing snake bites and they were doing the, the bite stuff. And we're, you know, we're always learning. But, you know, those things were never done in uh, any ill will intent. They were just, you know, we're like he was making things look fun and and constantly yeah. re focusing and reestablishing, you know, what you want to get. And Brian is, you know, we've all matured greatly in what we've yeah. learned and we really want to paint these animals in a positive light, but there are people that cannot forgive that can't look at the bigger picture yeah. and don't realize how weak we are when we're divided. And we really well, that's, the, yeah, that's the thing, you know, I mean, I, I always tell people like, I don't understand. I, and I've, I've been very vocal about the fact that, you know, I made tons of mistakes, or especially early on in snake bites. But it was a different time back then. You know, I couldn't do what I did back then now, and I wouldn't do what I did back then now. I've learned. I've I've grown. I, I like to per, per, uh, you know just put these animals in a very different light than maybe I did back then. But people can't let it go. You know, I mean, it's just like you know, me and you talked the other day, Kevin, about how like people saying I keep monitors and rack systems. 
You know, I've never kept monitors and rack systems. I don't keep monitors and rack systems, but, you know, people won't let that go. And, and just like the might thing, you know, I mean, they won't let go something that's not true and, and they won't stop. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I see people commenting about something I did 10 years ago. Well, you know, if I could go back and look at everyone's life 10 years ago, I guarantee you all made mistakes. It's not what I did 10 years ago. It's what I'm doing now that matters. It's what I've been doing now for the last three years that matters. But yet, like you said, and I've said this before, like I have like kind of walked away from the reptile breeding world. I mean, I still breed a lot of snakes. We still sell a lot of snakes, but I don't, I'm not involved in that world anymore. And, and, and I always say like, if, if anyone thought about it, why would you want the guy with the largest following to not support your hobby? Because you've basically blacklisted him. Like what, how could the hobby be in a better position without me supporting it like you know what i mean it doesn't make any sense to me it's like you should want me to want to do everything i can do it's like us arc you know like i could raise so much money for us arc because of my following yet phil who's a great guy and i love phil to death he can't align himself with me because he feels like somehow it's going to hurt us arc's image if he's if he supports me and well, so that's... so you know it's just stupid i certainly don't think that's that's Per se, Phil, that's, you know, a US ARC as a, you know, as an organization, they have certain things. I guess we have to just think about it. It's almost like the Jared, you know, subway thing and certainly not aligning. <laughs> but I, no, I told but you it, she said right. she was 17. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. That, but we all understand, like, if we use like a spokesperson or align ourselves with like one entity and some time somebody tarnishes, that one entity, it then reflects on whoever supports it or whatever. But, yeah. you know, I, I'm i very, you know, sad about that because what you said, Brian, is so true. I'm forever trying to um, unify and uni unite us because obviously it's reptile laws are like a big thing of mine. And I certainly work with US ARC and I find it, you know, a, a privilege being, you know, utilized by US ARC as, you know, being an expert in the things when, when it comes time to craft our arguments and um but phil is wonderful and it's definitely not a, a, a phil thing at all he is oh no no and i don't mean to attack phil at all i think phil's a great guy and i think he's the right guy and i'm still he is do, he is supporter. doing a wonderful job considering yeah. what yeah. us arc is up against and i just i give him major i just problems. think that yeah, I think he's great. You know, don't get oh, yeah. me wrong. And I don't mean to target him at all. I just think that if more of the leadership put a little bit of a kibosh on the bullshit, it would be better, you know, but everyone's just so afraid of like, oh, if I, like you said, oh, if I, if I, if I defend, defend Brian, now I'm going to be attacked by all of the, the, you know, go herping fans or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and it's a shame, you know, and, and in the meantime, I get on, and I don't mean to bitch. I'm just saying. No, you have every right. You have every right no. to bitch. Yeah. No, but I mean, I get I get unjustly targeted for having, you know, sick animals, mites, uh, abusing animals, uh, minimalistic cages. People say like, oh, I, you know, I, I, I keep my snakes in prisons yet. That's what everyone does. You know, I mean, yeah. I, mean I didn't I didn't start the fucking Freedom Breeder Racks. I didn't start ARS. I didn't, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying that's, that's even right. I'm just saying, like, it's weird how like. And, and it's funny because all the time, dude, I'll see people post either an Instagram video or an Instagram picture or a YouTube video. And I think, oh, my God, if I did that, the Internet would break because people would lose their fucking minds, you know. And um, so I have to be so careful. And even like Jay, my, my camera guy, you know, he talks about it all the time. Like I do walk on eggshells on every single thing I do all the time. We'll film something. And halfway through, I'll be like, oh, we got we got to refilm that because because you know what I said one word off. And I'm like, I know people are going to destroy me about that. So I have no choice but to redo it, you know, and it sucks that you just can't like be like, hey, listen, this is what it is. This is what it is. And, and like, I just don't know, like in MJ, you were you were at my place, man. And obviously, Steve and Des know me well, uh, you know, who could possibly think that I don't love animals? You know, what I mean, okay. like who is who like anyone that spent five minutes with me couldn't possibly think that I am a bad person that hates animals and that abuses animals. And that it just blows me away, you know. But anyway, I don't want to bring it down. We were having a great time, but it does bother me. And, it, and I wish that I it wasn't that way. But I guess I have to live with it. Well, Brian, just so you know, I don't step on eggshells. I run around in the mud. So but because I, I really, nobody, <laughs> nobody really knows who I am and likes me. So I can I can afford to do those things. So I guess well, I like that. Well, you guy. know, but that's an interesting thing because Jay, my, again, my camera guy talks about that. And he said, you know, 
the 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 class clown doesn't get ragged on when he does something bad, but the good guy gets no. ragged on when he's bad. Yeah, you know I mean? the good and, guy, because I am definitely the bad guy. And it's, well, no, I think that's I true, though. That. You know, it's like when, when someone is portrayed as a good guy, if you make one mistake, they destroy you. But when the bad guy makes a horrible mistake, I'm like, yeah, he's just I guy. am a horrible mistake. Everything I do oh. is a horrible mistake. It, no, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. No, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, mistakes. well, we all make a lot of mistakes, but you've also been a trendsetter in, I mean, the hobby wouldn't be where it is today without Kevin McCurley. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sure. from monitor, with monitors to, yeah, with monitors to ball pythons to, I know you're going to crack the code for Boland's pythons. Ah, dude, it's already, it's already being cracked right now. I assure yeah. you. Yeah, and that's why I said, I, I said this. I, I actually, it comes out in a couple of days. I, I, I filmed it. I said it. I said, you know, Kevin will crack the code for these guys, and uh, I knew you would because that's what you do, you know. And 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 that's uh, so. Oh, the hate you know. I'm gonna get, <laughs> Ooh, baby! Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Bull, yo, you need bowling aid if you want to keep bowling's bitching and tight. You need bowling aid. We took oh. Papua New Guinea mountain cloud forest streams and we dehydrated it. And then we reconstituted it with H3O and proprietary chemicals and pollution. And then when you take one of these jugs of bowling aid and you give it to your friend, yo, Brian, you know why your bowling's so weak and snivelly? Because I didn't send you bowling aid. Get that shit, dude, the thing's going to be pounding. And then you got to get bowling aid plus. Made with the tears of my enemies and 17 <laughs> internet stars and experts. We took and dehydrated their big <laughs> tears. And then we put it and reconstituted it with H3O. And now the bitches are ovulating in the air. <laughs> Yo, you guys are laughing, but this is real. Bowling aid is real. You're going to see. Let me get some. You need to follow me, honey, on Jabroni Reptiles, because it's going to be coming out on that. You got it. All right, Missy? I got it. I got it. That's right. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> How did I take this guy seriously? I know. You should see my text messages blowing up. Like, the fuck, this guy's a heroin addict, man. What's he no, doing? No, meth. I already told him to fucking heroin. Meth. <laughs> you gotta go down I mean, you know, I'm I'm if you're doing heroin. Yeah. <laughs> he's, on next yep. level. he's on next level, Molly. No, no, fuck that, dude. Those glow oh, sticks oh. and shit, I'm fucking hitting people. <laughs> they're going to like you back. They're going to like you back. Dude, like, listen, purple. listen, listen, MJ. You can, I know for a fact I can recycle my pee five times <laughs> off of just one dose of meth. Do you, do you realize how efficient that drug is? Oh, my God. Even Jeremy drinks my pee. Wow. <laughs> you guys even know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How does that happen? No, they, I don't they, know what the fuck they, you're the talking meth about. The meth heads, they take the meth, <laughs> they're, sleep. Piss, they're pissing out the meth, and then they drink it again, and it puts the meth back in their system. Oh, shit. They it's been weird. It. And then they're fucking high for like a long time. And, and then they our, lose their teeth. Our hats, you should you should look at our hats. Look at our hats for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, why do you know this information? Because oh, crystal meth works for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 you, hey, yo, 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 bitch, you know how many cages I can clean? Five days straight sitting. Fucking oh. on uh, crystal meth, Woo. yo! Like a couple oh. thousand spider balls, and they're upside down. I can clean oh. the cages, get all around it, cause I'm fast like a hummingbird. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> good God. God, what the fuck am I even talking about? Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. You're good. Ryan just sits so. back and he's like, "Yeah, you go, Kev. You take hey, listen. all the heat." Woo. I they're know. They're not gonna be talking about my mites no more. They're gonna be talking. <laughs> Kevin is a crystal meth producer, <laughs> user in a future. Clearly. <laughs> I'm a user, a loser. <laughs> and then there was a calm. MJ's like, what the hell? <laughs> hey, bro, I mean, I knew this shit was going to be historical, but this is definitely like, I'm telling you, man, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to make some, some people proud off this episode. So <laughs> Yo, that's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, real quick. Hey, okay. So when you when uh yeah. you, you, when you took off real quick, Brian, to go get your charger, we were talking about um. I'm sorry, Kevin. I went to go pee. He texted me. Hold on, dude. I gotta go pee. <laughs> no, no. Now I'm down, like, to, what? Five, when you got now I'm down no to 5% dick. again. Hey, when you got no dick, it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Brian's like, Sorry, Brian, now, clean me up, baby. Brian's like, now 2%. <laughs> <laughs> I got you on that, oh. bastard. I brought that all back. That came yeah. full motherfucking circle. <laughs> <laughs> I Chimpanzees. Don't. All right, MJ. Oh, I'm gonna I, don't, I don't fuck. Honestly, I was going to talk about ball pythons again, but it doesn't matter. Let's just fuck it. Ball pythons. Uh, no one likes ball pythons. Either, exactly. Man. Stephen almost nodded off. Fucking, it was, you know what I mean? Desiree threw up in her mouth. It was just not a good thing. So. <laughs> oh, I love ball pythons, but I'd rather talk about monitors. Yes, Ooh. monitors, like Bell's Face Lace monitors. Oh, I thought it like computer yeah. monitors or something, because I'm looking at a computer. I mean, the beauty of a computer monitor is allowing us to be here. I can see you all. Uh, I don't know. Man, dude. Uh, are you talking about Veranda Salvatore and the likes of them? Mm. I want to talk about threads. Building ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you're going to bring me back. I'll, I'll have, hold on, i got to collect myself. Bring it back from the meth storm. <laughs> I'm going to talk about threads of trust. Oh my God. Like one of these days when I was like doing like massive acid, I had to come up with this way to teach people to understand what I'm doing with monitors. How am I getting this little fucking wild creature to like come out and like talk to me? Hey, Kev, I love you. Well, I, I need to like do something like people with an IQ of 82 or below. So I came up with this idea of like threads. Yo, this little thread of trust and this little thread of trust. And get my hands right there, and they all collect collectively go together, and they build a rope, <laughs> and then that's it. And that's why you, I make lizards that want to bite you, like you, like you. Yeah. You wow. Uh, I don't. That's like. Is that I, don't, a, I don't know. I just ma like made that shit right, up. Right, right now, you just made that up. No, I mean, definitely just made that up. But the threads, yeah, no, I was trying to like convince. Yeah. There was a, a long way from, I got a lot of hate when I was first doing all my monitor stuff and showing them as friendly and showing what I could do with them. People were saying I was scamming people and rubbing yeah. food on my hands and making them cold and doing all that. But eventually I convinced people that I actually can tame these and socialize these animals and make them into a very uh, thinking, uh, tractable, uh, reliable animal. And I just had to show them how to do it. So I thought the threads of trust was like a really good way because you can get really impatient when you're dealing with a psycho in its box and you're trying to like get that to be this wonderful thing. So you have to, you know, threads, obviously all these threads together have to make something bigger. And that is ultimately what you're, you know, you're worrying about, and you know, when you want to make uh, a nice pet that you love. Now, what yes. about, what about when the thread goes the opposite way? You know what I mean? Like you have a well, bad Okay, episode. yeah, and, and yeah, so you have a bad episode and you need to be able to identify your bad episode and you need to try to get out of it as soon as you can because you don't want to turn yeah. that into a bad rope. Steven, talk about that. Talk about talk about baby Kush. Talk about what, what happened with baby Kush, because this is this has been a big question with, with what happened, how you got him, received him, and then he went to fucking AWOL. Yeah, we had this little croc monitor. Um Becky yep. Brian was here the day we got it. We were shooting a video with it, it was jumping from person to person, needing off yep. our fingers. And then we think we put it in the cage that was a little bit too big. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I can I can pretty much tell you what you did without you even telling me what you did. That was what we did. And yeah, you you um you basically uh first of all you overwhelmed it, and okay. you 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 did person to person and you did all that kind of stuff like that. So they're so smart and they will know who you are pretty quick. But you have to start with probably one person as your lead person. Yeah. And you want to just give it a chance for it to take it in. And you definitely need to do a couple threads and then you need to put it away and let it think and then do a couple more threads and let it think. But when you put it in that big cage, you know, this is, this is the big thing. People have a lot of incorrect ideas about monitors and caging. And um, they're, they're, most people are, you know, are sadly wrong. Uh, monitors need to feel safe. So in our eyes, we're like, Ooh, it needs to have this giant cage and this big branch and up here and run down here and all the different stuff. And that's going to make a happy monitor. It will make a monitor that's an environment that it is worried about. And when you have a smaller environment, it can take it in. It can understand its environment and it feels confident that it has things under control. 
put it in a big giant environment. There's more things that can go wrong. There's chances that it can go away. And all of a sudden, like you come around the corner and you spook it and it's hiding and it comes out and sees you. All these different things are triggers. Mm -hmm. And but the small cage, not a lot of room in the fact that you need to basically obviously manage its, you know, its husbandry as far as the right temperatures and getting its basic things, you know, its food, its uh, safety, its water, but manage what the animal needs, not what you think is going to give it this uh, glorious environment that you could go on the internet and show. Yeah. Uh, and it really does help. And uh, I really don't even engage people with the shit. I really, uh, they can go fuck themselves literally when it comes down to it, because I've literally watched people screw shit up time and time and time again. And people that don't really understand what I'm even talking about are dictating some of these ideas. And this is not about pet YouTubing. This isn't about any of the shit that people that live in a hypocrit hypocritical environment, people that are talking about, you're putting your ball python in this cage, it's in a drawer, and you shouldn't be doing that as that person goes into a grocery store and literally buys meat, eats other animals that are literally abused every minute of their lives. And they don't ever seem to think that's not animal abuse and that's not animal whatever, but then they can go and cast stones on people like Brian and myself and a million other people. And then they have this uh, uppity position where they're talking down to people or they're casting all this stuff. And they're literally, it's nonsense. I'm not really fucking interested in it. And it's, it's, it's Fuck literal that. gibberish. I'm interested in what the animal needs and having, uh, reduce the stress on that animal teaching that animal it can it, it can trust us and actually enjoy us and we're a good part of its world and that's what i'm interested in and i don't care if that's going to be done in a cardboard box or a 20 foot cage whatever it takes you know i'm interested in the animal's mind and uh i just i just really hate when people are <laughs> fouling the waters with all this other gibberish uh -huh. damn well spoken. Brian, I didn't step on any uh, eggshells, did I? <laughs> no, you I think that was perfect, man. You were right. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the thing, you know, animals are individuals too. One animal might like a bigger cage, but another animal may not, you know, and, and you can't just be uh, across all boards, you but know. Generally I mean? with a monitor like that that's being taken out of one environment into another, that is definitely not the go to. It you yeah. gotta let that animal take it in, give it a couple days at the very least. Let it establish itself. Let it get to know who's around. If there's a lot of activity in the room, those are all going to be triggers. These animals are coming out, and they're very aware of what's going across the room. Their eyesight is incredible. You watch the behavior of that animal. Watch the eyes, the intelligence, and you trigger that animal a couple times, and he jumps off you and lands on the ground. And if you chase him, if you chase him and you go into a predatory-type engagement, um, that is going to build negative threads and then you get yourself a ding dong on yep. your, on your end. Yep. <laughs> What's the worst ding dong you've worked with? Uh, I've, I've had, I've had monitors that like staff or reptiles. No, <laughs> I've had monitors that like come out and like, uh, like run at you trying to, yep. um, Mr. Friendly, <laughs> Mr. Friendly used to, yeah. he was dude, he was a demon. He was, um, friendly. It was, uh, yeah, it was a water monitor, it was a celebensis, and I got him, you know, I don't know, it's probably like two feet long, and literally was demented, just bouncing all over the cage, and then if you went near him, he'd turn around, like wag his tail, and come running at you and trying to bite yeah, you. That's our Uanawai. It's that's insane. Yeah, yeah and um, actually, Mr. Friendly is Mrs. Friendly, but. It's uh, at the time I was just uh, calling him that because he was a demon and I broke that animal. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was that was a really bad animal. But obviously, when you're dealing with like, let's say if you're dealing with a Salvatore or Salvadori when it's bigger, croc monitors are no joke as far as the biting. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you do want to win over a big croc monitor, probably the best way to do it is put them in a cage that is uh, wire that has, you know, uh, wires you can put your fingers through and when they're sitting there relaxing you can touch them and what you do is you go in there and you just touch them and you get them to realize you touched them and you get the tongue flicking and you get the eyes and just 
every time you touch them, that's a little thread. If you can get them where they're not wincing and yeah. running away, but you need that touch. It's not going to be achieved by just looking at them. They need something. And, and uh, getting them to flick their tongue on your hand mm -hmm. and tasting you and letting them figure it out. Those are all really, really important things, but there's ways you can, all this different stuff can be done. Yeah, and you watch, obviously I'm very much into behavior and how they do the thing with the lips, how they lick, you know, the, the tongue goes down the side. Okay. If you're engaging one of those monitors and it suddenly goes from licking straight out where there's like a fair bit of rapid, you know, thinking, tongue flicking, and then all of a sudden they clear the side of their mouth with their tongue, you've just really achieved something because that animal is like, hmm. That's a, relax, that's a relaxed move. That's not a high stress move. That's And, you know, I do the whole, they, uh, the reptiles live in modes. And that's like one of probably the best advice I can give to anybody when I came up with all that stuff. It really seems to hold true with pretty much a lot of animals. And people not recognizing what the state, the mindset of that animal is when they're interacting with them and we're trying to get them into the thinking mode which ultimately is the quickest way to, for you to get them into the trusting mode, you know, where they're, you know, and I think that helps people uh, conceptualize, you know, how to start winning these animals over. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's a really cool fucking insight. What you said, as far as like the tongue going to the side, cause it's almost like a dog scratching, you know, you, you scratch a dog in a certain place and it's like, Oh yeah. And it's like, fucking super comfortable and shit. That's yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. that's what you're relating to with the monitor. It's so, just like one of those things like, or a dog, like if it's, if it's near you, I mean, some dogs, you know, they, they do weird things like, you know, looking straight at a dog is like a bad thing. Best way to bring a dog's, you know, uh, insecurities down is to not even acknowledge it. Let that dog smell you, never look at it. And, but then when you start, you know, dealing with the dog and he starts being comfortable enough where he looks away from you and he's not watching you, you know, that's that dog's comfort level is going down. But maybe in some cases, Dogs might also do that yawning and that stress kind of stuff where they're they're kind of like freaked out because you're wicked alpha. You know, dogs are very complex. Yeah, I hear you. Um, how different is the scale as far as like what you're talking about with monitors with crocodilians and stuff? It would it, be pretty much uh, very, very similar except for, you know, your tactility uh, with crocodiles or, uh, you know, uh, crocodilians in general. Once they're bigger, you know, you can get horrific injuries, you know, so it's, I think what's really important when I, when I've worked with uh, my crocodilians to uh, tame them, when they're little uh, and they're defensive, I get them over that by, uh, I make it so, I always have this thing, I say nothing is sacred, which means I pet their face, I pet the underside of their tail, I do every possible thing so they don't react and eventually they become desensitized where me putting my hands all over the face isn't going to uh, elicit a, a bite and that will hold true. So, you know, my dwarf came in now as adults, like if they bit you, it would be really horrible. And obviously crocodiles like saltwater crocs and Niles and all that, they, you know, really fuck you up. But we have these big dwarf came in that will yeah. allow you to pick them up and hold them and they don't nail you. And, and, but they're big 25 year old animals. And I did all that shit when they were little babies. Mm -hmm. And I just stuck to it. Mm. You, you stick do that to it. Say it again, Desiree. Um, well, okay. So now we're going to get into reactivity. Right. So a Cuban, you're going to get some crocodilians, just like monitors, that are going to be more reactive. So indeed, you can make a Nile monitor friendly, but largely Nile monitors are more reactive than water monitors, Asian water monitors. So there's a whole reactiveness where the animal uh, reacts with uh, fear without thinking. And it immediately goes from whatever mode it's in into immediately a fear mode. It's always going into this reaction. And you need to get it into the thinking mode. So if you have a really reactive animal, let's say like a Cuban croc is it's more work. It means there's more demands on what you can achieve. Yes, is it achievable? Absolutely, because it can be done with Niles. And once that animal is willing to pause and think, it you achieve so much when you're interacting with the animal and you're doing it properly when it's in 
that thinking mode, even if it's only in there briefly, if I can get into that animal's enclosure or into that interaction, why maintaining a thinking mode and then get out of it and put the animal back into its environment where it doesn't go into a fear mode, that is recorded. That little thread is a very, very important thread. And it's recorded in that mind of that animal. And you need to keep repeating that. And you'll just have to do it more with the reactive animal until you start getting it more comfortably into that thinking mode, which is then where we're achieving the, the trust. Yeah. So when you're, uh, when you're doing this with an animal, what is that, um, you know, as far as frequency of these episodes, what's that like that threshold between like, you know, keeping up with it and then pushing it too far where you're stressed. Well, you it. have to, you, I always call it like making them lose their cookies. Like if you, you know, you, you can have an episode that only lasts a thread, you know, 10 seconds, you go in there, you do something, you come into the environment and then you escape without making it lose the shit. That's a really good positive. So if you can do little 10 second episodes throughout the day, you know, it could be five times in the day, eight times during the day. But if you're going in there too much and the animal multiple times loses its shit, and okay. runs around like crazy, you need to reduce the frequency of those until you yeah. get that animal to the thinking state. It's more just reading your animal. Yeah, it's very much into reading your animal. And a lot of people don't have that ability. I see a lot of people that deal with reptiles or animals in general, and I don't I don't see them as seeing the things that I see mm -hmm. or or whatever. I see a lot of people that actually are probably keeping animals and can breed them but still don't seem to understand and read them very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what is the difference with your strategy? If you're not starting with the, with a neonate, like if you're not starting with a baby crocodile or monitor, let's say a, a two year old croc monitor. Or a, you know, oh yeah. Well, if the same thing with the, the two year old croc monitor, then it has to go into touch. I I'm going to make the most I'm ever going to get with that animal is when the animal can touch me. So if you got an animal that's running around a cage, losing its shit, I need to be able to touch it. So a croc monitor can bite you and can run past you out of the cage. So I would have part of that cage where that animal, at least part of the cage crawls up on some vinyl clad wire where you can touch it. Mm -hmm. And then that touching and then getting that animal to smell you and realize nothing bad happened. <clears throat> All of those things are important. So the same thing with uh, you know, a crocodile, but you have to put yourself into a situation where you're going to have some contact with that animal, but you're not going to get bit. And so however you achieve that comes down to how remarkable you can be with that situation. Mm. So for you, where would you like, at what point, you know, socializing this kind of more crazy, so to speak, or skittish older animal, do you go from those like outside the enclosure interactions to actually going inside and physically interacting just like face to face with that. I, I just comes down to what the animal will tolerate. And uh, so a lot of animals like monitors, if I go into the cage and I'm looking at them very much, your eyes, your eyes are going to provide a lot of stress. So going in there, I tend to do a lot of things where I don't even look at animals and I'll like look away mm -hmm. and I'm bringing things down because I've noticed a lot of times monitors don't just come butt rushing you and just try to maul you or at least when I'm looking away, they don't do that. They're like, that's a chance to look at you. And I'm showing like, I'm not really even worried about you. And you're giving that animal, you're bringing things down. If I sit there and glare at it yeah. and get in its face, whether it's a reticulated python, it's a king cobra, it's a croc monitor, it's a dog. I'm only gonna heighten that animal's uh, fear response or its reactiveness. So if I bring that down by looking away, just anything. I'll go in a monitor's cage and I literally put my hand like this and I look away and I let that animal, I can feel the tongue on me or if I'm touching it or I touch the chest of it, or if I touch its mouth and then animal flicks a couple times, I go in there and then I pull away and get out of the cage where the animal still sits there. That is a really good thread. That's a positive thread. Keep doing that and you'll watch. Wow. I'm actually getting a little further. And then after I push beyond the animal's mouth, even I'm not still looking at it, I can push down its throat into its chest and I start rubbing the chest. And then you're like teaching these animals that maybe something feels good, or maybe I, you know, I'm not hurting it and I'm interesting and stuff like that. And then that's a thread and you keep doing that before long, you push your hand into its chest. It puts its, its leg on you, its foot on you. 
Like it's your starting, the beginning engagement where it actually crawls up on you. And then I do a lot of the stuff once they're in your hand, I'll hold them over my head if I'm afraid I'm going to get bit mm -hmm. or whatever. And I do a lot of that. So you bring their stress down. I start putting them over my head. And that's my guys all know that's like one of my tricks, whether yeah. it's a snake or it's a lizard. But these are all things I learned from dealing with a lot of wild caught crazy animals that wanted to bite me and kill me. And I knew that if I go in there and I manhandle them, I'm never going to get anywhere. So I was like, I really want to interact with this animal and I don't want to get mauled. So how can I do this stuff by, you know, twirling around, put my hands up in the air with it. And I learned that I could reduce uh, conflict just by doing that and get less bites. So I just taught myself all of this. No one ever taught me any of this. Mm -hmm. This was just uh, out of necessity. That's sick. That's why you're the man. Right. Man, Kevin, how much shit have you taught in yourself? I mean, I mean, I don't think we can. Oh, I, I teach myself all this. Like, I don't even like. They're like right now. One of my targets is you know breeding Boland's pythons, and I don't listen to how the guy over in Europe bred Boland's, even though he, he he's bred he bred Boland's, and yeah. uh, because it's it's only going to confuse me. And listen, I don't want to listen to all the experts, all the you know major bowling experts that know everything, because yeah. it will only um, pollute my mind. So I decided, you know, I'm gonna you know do bowlings my way, and breed them my way, and uh, just do like use my my snake sense or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and uh, that is now working. So we'll yeah, we'll see. I, I've, uh, let's, I mean, let's see, I, I got into this as far as like social media wise, following like accounts like yours, which there isn't a lot of account like yours, but like seeing things like what shit you've been doing it since been like 2017. And I, I could see, I could see you fucking the progression you're, you're already at from these last three years, like just by what you're posting. I can only imagine what it's like on Jeremy's end fucking being there. So I, I, I can't wait to actually go fucking visit your facility one day, bro. And, uh, and just really see what it's all about. If I'm, you know, if, if you let little pussy bitch ass people in, I don't, I don't know. Well, dude, yo, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, being a huge <laughs> player at all, yeah, you're, you're, you're certainly welcome. That, oh, that is legit. It's uh, just a lot of people probably just don't want to come here. Brian, Brian's good because he likes to come visit us like once a year. And you know, a lot of begging and pleading. Oh. Please, I need to be someone. Will you come and visit yeah. me? Yeah, and you know what's extra awesome about that is usually I'm the gatekeeper to him, which I learned after we did Tinley this fall. And everyone was like, oh, my God, Kevin. And Kevin's like, leave me alone. And I'm like, yeah, you got to go do things. And I had to, like, become his manager. And then, like, that last Kevin, day, I, I need like, you over here. 30 we're over here. 12, yeah, we're over here. Yeah. We're going to go do this. we got to do that. So I've become, like, his gatekeeper. Uh, but what's really awesome about like people like Brian is that extended friendship means fuck me. So I mean nothing. And then like when he came last time, I was out of town and then I get a text. Oh, Brian's coming. Okay, cool. When? The day I get back, basically. And I'm like, fuck. Okay. So I'm texting Brian. I'm like, what? What? You're coming? What do you, what do you need? And he's like, the only thing I need is for you to keep me and Kevin like on point. Otherwise, we're gonna sit down and talk for thirty hours about nothing, and I'm gonna get nothing done. And I was like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> I think we did it. We did do it. We, we did. We do filmed it. a lot when he was here last time. Kev, have you ever worked with the tricolor monitor? Good question. Yes, you and I. You want away? Yeah. Yeah, you and I. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. They like to eat. They like to eat each other. <laughs> that oh, yes, I did. So oh, um, I dealt with them when they were first. They were first coming in, and they were like bastards. Yeah, they yeah. were like just the jerkiest. So I remember having this this male, and I had two females. One day I come in, and I'm like, somebody let out one of my females because my female was gone, and I couldn't understand. It. And I'm like, all right, I gotta tear the cage apart. So I go into the cage. I take the male dick. Take the female, shy. And I'm like looking through the cage and I'm like, freaking thing isn't even in here. And all of a sudden, the male's like, oh, I got it. I got it. No problem. And threw up the female. I was like, 
I don't like you guys. You guys suck. Because <laughs> you cost a lot of money and you just ate your little girl. And yeah, so uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't so enamored. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I really, I fell on um, water Terrible. monitors uh, painfully because they're so wonderful and they're literal genius. Uh, croc monitors are literal genius, but water monitors can be like your best friend. They're like yeah. so, um, so sincere. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah, just, like they're just, they're magical. Yeah, you 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 you've established that in just in your videos that you post and on your on YouTube, it's man, it's it's unreal the way you've worked with these monitors, but like how you have it down, like you have it down to a T. Um, but let's let's talk about like the like in the I mean I don't know when was the last time you brought in or had to work with a fucking crazy import monitor, like something that was like like holy shit, like the devil. Yeah, <laughs> we have a. Uh, Sabawa female, she's yeah. the devil. Like literally, how big? How big? How big? Um, well, she's she's probably you know she's only like four foot, but yeah. dude, oh, she, she, went, she she is friggin' just. I mean, she you know they come in through the skin trade, so they're like literally whatever. And Sambawas tend to be very very reactive. It seems um, a little bit more reactive, even genetically. When I'm breeding those, you still can tell that Sambawa gene is in there, and. Um, like would they'll bite shit like bite like a broom handle and they're like yeah i'm gonna kill this thing for the next 20 minutes and there's not a thing you can do to get me off and then you're like going that's my hand i'm in major, <laughs> major trouble. trouble that's the trouble yeah. yeah yeah do i give up on that thing or what because i mean it is just a uh, you know what i gotta thing. admit they're 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 really they're like they're douchey I, at least, you know, I, I don't have a, an incredible amount of experience with them, but I was not enamored because it was nothing but reaction, reaction, reaction. Didn't want to think, wanted to hide, panic to, to get away, and then eat any lizard that it can that's smaller than it. Well, Does that sound right? Yeah, well, mine was on the loose for a while. Oh, that's uh, even better. Yeah. <laughs> oh and man, the, who didn't know about it? Who didn't know about it this whole the whole time it was on the loose? The, 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 the zoo dreams. The guy who owns it. Fucking... But it was gone for a few days, and then um, it was gone it was, for like two weeks. It was like out <sighs> climbing on days. one of the black tree tree monitors cages, and I. It's like to I'm gonna eat you. that thing. Yeah, you. I just wanted to eat them. You can grab that thing, like it's gonna tear your. Lose a off. finger, like. Yeah, but it, it literally, yeah, this, so these monitors that will bite for keeps are no joke. <laughs> um, and the bacteria that's in their mouths is, is horrible. So if you do ever do get bit by one of these monitors, what you need to do is you need to make a solution of bleach and water. The bleach is just enough to make the water just a little bit slippery. Put your hand in there, 15 minutes, no joke. You must do that. Otherwise, you're going to be crying. Okay. Because you're going to okay. get an infection that is going to make your arm th or whatever throb so painful. It's terrible. I learned the hard way. It took me quite a while to figure that one out. Yeah. Did you guys know that, Stephen and Desiree, the whole bleach thing? No, it's, no, that's it's new. good. I guarantee you it, it is. It is. It, is this save, it will save you some misery. Hmm. What was that bite from? Yeah. Uh, I've had I've had some horrific bites. I got a. Uh, I got, I got nailed by a, a blue tail and bit me on the back of my finger and it peeled like the back of my knuckle open where you could see the tendons nice. oh. and uh, it like bit me and then twisted and then just like opened it up and oh my God, did I not, like I, I think I used probably, you know, like betadine or whatever and I did like the classic thing and <laughs> Probably that night, my arm is throbbing. My arm starts swelling up. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, this is horrible. It, it hurt so bad. And I got this infection. It was terrible. So I don't worry. Long. I came along with this idea. Like, if I just soak it in something, like, it's an antibacterial solution for a while. So I did this bleach and water. And ever since I did that, I've I've never had to deal with with any of that, and I, I remember like once or twice where I was like, ah, I strayed and I didn't do it. Oh my 
my hand. You know, you get this oral infection <laughs> right back to that idea. But I may I always make my guys, if they get bit, I'm Make like, no, no joke. Yeah. You need to do that. That's just, it's got to be that way. So what are your thoughts on, uh, on, on venom and varanids across the board? Venom. What do you, what, what do you, what, what's your question? Or do you, do you subscribe to that theory that all varanids or most are venomous to some degree? Um, No, I don't really, I don't really regard it like that. So I even think a Komodo dragon. So if I took a Komodo's saliva, and the, the, basically the intent of that saliva is to be able to bite something like a water buffalo and then track it for three days and become septic. So we get a bloodborne infection. So what you have is you have this really a horrific, uh, ultra blood destroying uh, pathogen with these, these, it could be one strain of bacteria or multiple different bacteria that are typically uh, the ambient flora of that Komodo dragon. And it, that's bacteria. Um, obviously, venom is a modified saliva. So you might get a saliva that can start breaking down tissue and cause a little bit of damage, but then making it like opportunistic bacteria then gets upper hand. But as I understand it is I could literally take Komodo dragon um, saliva and I could filter. I could put it through a filter that could filter bacteria out. And then if I subjected tissue to that, it doesn't have nearly that same reaction or that degrading uh, infection and bloodborne nightmare that the normal saliva would have. So therefore, if that is a venom, how could that be? How could I filter out uh, uh, the protein in their saliva? So I don't, I, I mean, maybe I'm just twisted, but I, I'm thinking it's bacteria. Yeah. Would, would the venom maybe be like a, like a primer almost like an anti Well, but yeah, but venom is just, yeah. remember, it's just modified saliva. So yeah. where do we, where do we go from, go if I go and bite Jeremy, even yeah. my saliva is going to potentially, it's going to cause, it's going to degrade tissue and then it's going to get a secondary bacterial infection from all the stuff in yeah. my mouth. Right. But, uh, so, you know, I I don't really know what people are ultimately trying to achieve by that, um, but I don't think I could take rattlesnake venom and go and just start filtering it and and get rid of the venom just because uh, you know out of the liquid. I don't really think that that would really work. So I don't necessarily. I wouldn't. I I guess at least in the logistics, I don't think I would call it venom. I just call it really noxious. Uh, uh, symbiotic bacteria that works hand in hand with that that monitor. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You guys, you have any questions? No. Um, yeah. so kind of circling back to oh, let's see if MJ is anything. Hey, MJ. Hey. Hey. What? You got any questions right now? Yeah, I have a shit ton of questions. Why? I'm curious. Being nice to you for once. Uh, you oh, is it? Is it like? Oh, are you done? Are you like you out of things to ask them? No, we're not done. No. Just trying to be okay, cool. friendly and uplifting. really, that's odd, Stephen. I'm happy tonight. <laughs> is, that, is that for what Kevin just put me through? I bet you are, fucker. <laughs> yeah, that was that was extremely entertaining for me. Yeah. I bet it was. Watch it. Yeah, no, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna loop that at work. Play it on the speakers. <laughs> Kevin, are yeah, you there? yeah. <laughs> what? Pantera. Yeah. Oh, okay. don't fucking don't get him down that fucking line. Oh God. War of mouth. War of mouth. Play War of Mouth for me, please. <laughs> oh, he's really good. <laughs> oh. I didn't even know he's this raw. He's this raw on the fucking sticks. That's really All amazing. Right. What's going Sorry, on? How long, you, how long have you been playing that for? Guitar? Five yeah. Days. yeah, I play I play guitar, dude. I'm a metalhead. I have like you never heard my music? I no, I, I that's why I said Pantera. That's one that's one of my favorite oh, bands as far yeah, as like I, I, I'm a huge Pantera fiend, but no, I'm I'm a metalhead. I have I have recorded music, I have a band, whatever. But yeah, I'm I'm into you have a band. Yeah, a band called Crotalis. Crotalis. Yeah. Crotalis. Go look go uh yeah. okay. 
Go to YouTube, type in Crotalus, C-R-O-T-A-L-U-S, official video Cinder, C-I-N-D-E-R. And you're going to see a guy that kind of looks like Kevin, but also kind of doesn't, and you'll be confused for the first half. <laughs> and it's actually that guy. <laughs> Is this a real thing? You guys fucking with me right no, now? No, no, no. It's a real thing. This is a real thing. It's legit. Dad's just, it's just like, yeah. Sorry, Cinder. sorry. It's almost midnight over here. Oh, yeah. It's in here. I'm a mom now, so my days so, are so Holy shit. You actually have, you're, you're part of a band. I see this. Three years. I am, I am a band. I, I'm a, <laughs> I write lots of songs, and I'm, uh, I'm metal through and through. I mean, meth, I, meth and metal, yo. You can't, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Method metal. Method yeah. Metal. <laughs> you like, my, you like my fake teeth? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do all the meth that I'm doing and have these choppers. <laughs> Yo. Oh my God. God, you got them veneers, boy. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> How do you afford those teeth? Spider balls, yo. Yeah. Spider <laughs> Wobbly oh one, the wobbly Wob one. wobbliest, right from the source. Thirty dollars ship. <laughs> you, corrected, you corrected that price. I was at forty-five, but <laughs> hey, Kevin. Since we were talking about things that you just fucking, you know, got things so dialed in, I want to talk about basins. Okay, so basin boas, uh, basin Amazon basin boas. I, you know, you you have them in some really fucking neat enclosures. Uh, what what are the sizes of those? The the like the length of it, it's like fourteen feet long. No, no, uh, no. Actually, one of them. The one are you talking ones was like pink and all that different stuff. Yeah, it's I'm, like oh, they, I don't, there's no. It, it look, they look custom. They look like you I built, build them. them. I build those. Yeah, yeah they're tall. Yeah, I, make, I make I make some weird cages. Um, yeah, and then you have babies being landed on crates and stuff. It's very yeah, unique. Yeah. It's very unique, dude. But it's like obviously it works. So what the fuck? Yeah. Like, you know this is a uh, yeah. Look, it's, um, I, I just build, I like to, I don't know. I have like, I have like weird ideas of, of animals sometimes. And, uh, that's just me following, uh, through like ways that I think a better way to keep the animals and manage them. And, uh, I just start building. I just go start going to the home Depot and I just start buying shit. I'm like, all right, what am I doing? And I have like, and he disappears for two weeks. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I go presto, look at this shit. And you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, uh, I like, I like to make things look kind of pretty too. So, yeah. uh, you like to paint, uh, no, he picks things that automatically are pretty colors. <laughs> oh, I can paint, I paint shit too. <laughs> but, uh, I like just, I mean, obviously, I love like animal plastics and stuff like that, but yeah, I've seen that. The demands that I have for caging exceed any cage supplier ever. So <laughs> I have to build shit like crazy, and I have to be really creative. So I built, I build shit out of like foam and bins and. What kind uh, of power tools do you use? Like, every, I have, have more tools. Of them. I have more tools <laughs> than you can. Yes. Like, which one? Like, which brand? Are you like a Milwaukee? Uh, Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Yeah, Fisher. Fisher <laughs> Price. Uh, oh, yo, but it's Fisher Price Pro. That's no. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, a lot of my power tools are actually cordless now, so that's all going to be like Dewalt. But um, I am a I'm a tool junkie. I love tools, and I like to be able to do things right. So you don't cut corners. Um, sometimes I do it's just as long as you don't know I do, but no, <laughs> it's not. Uh, I sure I do. I do. I literally build cages out of insulation foam. That's sick. People are like, What? And then they see it and they're like, Oh, I see that. And that actually, oh, I think that actually works. And you know what? I usually don't like to let people see my caging, I usually like to hide That's some of my true. stuff that I do. I'm dying to see how your caging is in person because it's like you, you can only see so much in a picture, you know yep. what I mean? And it's like fuck, but it's just I, I've never seen any kind of enclosures like that before ever. Right. Yeah, I haven't either. I just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just I don't sleep very well. I have a very active brain, so it comes on at night and it's like, hmm, how am I going to build these baby monitor cages? I remember being traumatized yeah. for like two weeks. I just that couldn't was, get that thing started. Yeah. 
And I was like, when I was just doing that last build, I was like, I don't want to do this. This is horrible. I don't even know what I'm doing. And then I just started doing it and doing it. And now it ends up making and then you know when great cages. You know when there's a mistake because from the other end of the hall you hear, fuck! Yeah. I never no. got! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Everyone's like, That's don't like, go to that side of the hall. Yeah. Don't go there. Just stay away from you, Grumpy. <laughs> I, I, was, I was raised with a dad just exactly like that. I raised, <laughs> I raised, I raised motocross and he, I was always fucking up my bike and shit and the uh, when he was working on it and I knew he couldn't get it fixed, I'd hear him cussing and shit in the garage. And I'm like, well, I'm just not going to go in the garage right now. I'll yeah. Go, I'll go back yeah. up, go to my PlayStation and fucking be like, I'll let him, let him deal with it. Yeah. Uh, Somebody would go to like walk down the hall where he is and be like, no, 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 go out the back door. Go out the back door. Don't then, go that But see, I would come in there and yell at you. Hope you're having fun playing on make believe. Yeah. While I'm dealing with reality. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it, it's not really it wasn't and, it was i mean it's not make believe now because it was resident evil i think there was that was about coronavirus and you know what i would do then i would like just to give you a little bit of levity i come in there and stomp your xbox to death <laughs> get out there in the no, garage with that bike that. that you broke i guarantee you he would yeah. fucking do that 100 absolutely would do my, that. Dad was the, my dad was the kind of guy where he fucking wanted to do it himself he fucking didn't want no help he was oh he no was, no no i would just make you come out there and suffer sit in that goddamn corner you bastard you broke <laughs> You broke another <laughs> motorcycle. Not if I got a trophy. Not if I podium. He fucking don't give a fuck. So you know, <laughs> you gotta win. Yeah, everybody wins, right? Is that take their shot. Everybody gets a trophy. Shooters take their shots. <laughs> um, we're, so we've been talking about monitors, right? Uh, <clears throat> as far as like you know, thread building, which is very important and whatnot. Bolins, right? That's how far. I mean, you crack the code, right? But I would. How far are we from like actually? Yeah, you'll you'll be seeing them. <laughs> like, you'll be seeing them. I just like uh, this is this is the topic that makes him go back into his cryptic. Yeah, I, I'm gonna get I'll get, cri I'll get cryptic on you. <laughs> Bones is a goddamn dream animal of mine. Um, you sold fucking. They're, they're they're a tricky. They are very very tricky species to figure out. They're probably one of the hardest snakes, probably to breed. Uh, for sure. Is and, uh, just, just so many people have tried breeding them and it's just, uh, it'll make you go crazy. Mm. Is it something though you believe to where, uh, I mean, if you fucking follow these goddamn instructions, it's not so bad. Like, is, I mean, is, is that where we're getting at with these bullets or is it something? I, I, I certainly think I, I was able to, it was, I, you know, I didn't just do it with one or two. So it's just, I just did it my way and it, certainly seems to to work how long have you been working on it uh <laughs> it's it, it's it's a lengthy um project. i came up with the right idea about two years ago and i got my ass handed to me because i did something wrong i got i got the breeding done and i got the ovulation and i made a i made a, a critical mistake so i had to recover from that took a year off and then went back to it and um pretty much the same technique again and then i made an, probably another critical mistake that i and it, the critical mistakes are because you're so unsure of yourself because you're like i can't believe i just did it and now like managing you know a gravid female or whatever so um i've readjusted myself and uh i don't want to get you know ahead of myself but there's uh i now have things that are now tangible that it's just, you know, it's a waiting game. And, uh, but if everything goes as I think it will go, you know, if you attempt to breed four and you get four to go, I mean, I think that means that your technique is, your is, you know, it's, it's, uh, you're achieving what the animals need. You know, if, if, if everything I'm saying, uh, falls, falls through, but I definitely am not struggling to uh to get it to happen now because i pretty much the way i'm doing it um seems to have worked and uh i just do it my way and uh i'll just you know when i'm when i'm showing when i'm showing uh my results which i've just been holding uh when i finally decide to show that they're not going to be able to I, I will have it fully documented because that seems to be what they uh, will demand. 
Mm-hmm. And then you sold a pair, or maybe more than a pair, but you, Justin Kib- uh, Kabelka, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, J- Justin, yeah. Who? Justin, who? yeah, who? <laughs> who when, he, when he's messaging me. Oh, Jeremy? Raw. That was no, that's a, no, it's an inside joke. Chill out. It's an inside joke. Just, he was, we're all cool with he, Justin. Yeah, he reached out to me, and he's like, <laughs> he's hey, yeah, blah, 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 blah. What? He's a viewer. He's watching this right okay, now. Well, okay. Well, then he knows the joke. Justin, Justin knows the joke. <laughs> he reached out to me and he's like, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, Kevin, this is Justin Kabalka. And I'm like, who? And he's like, yeah, Justin, you know, like, you know, I, uh, I'm like, um, I, I don't, I don't know who you are. And he's like, oh. and he goes, oh, well, I keep and breed ball. I made him like explain himself. And he made it like painful. <laughs> and I'm like, he. <laughs> and uh he was just oh, pink. He's, like, trying to like tell me who he was and what he does and he's like i bought snakes from you or whatever and i'm like yeah, i don't know and then i let him sit on it and then i'm like of course i know who you are <laughs> and we were whatever so yeah he 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 ended up uh he got a pair and uh he's doing well and um he's coming to the dark side which is bones pythons no, yeah, we talked about it on a – I had a little um, conversation about it when I had him on my other podcast that I do, and he was really excited as far as, you know, fucking working with him and stuff. And uh, I don't know, that's that's a good gateway into, like, you know, because, dude, he – I mean, you really know as far as the kind of audience he has and whatnot. Like, he uh, he's somebody where if he, for whatever reason – I mean, he, he claimed that, you know, the Bullens is just a pet. Like, he doesn't, you know – but, you know, that that's what everybody says, right? So – it could lead into something else. And I feel like if you're somebody who fucking really has the, the codes to shit, you're going to tell your customers, right? Hell to the no. What do you mean hell to the, he wants I, to, I don't, I don't, I don't will know. not divulge that. I don't know. <laughs> it's I, some I, cliff, notes, cliff notes or something like, yo, this is what you do. <laughs> this I is what you do. Okay. It'll be on my, my tombstone. This is how you know it. In blood. <laughs> You know that's blood, yeah. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said because I have a long, I have a history with Bolins, and I have a history with um, maybe some of the other Bolins keepers uh, that that treated me like a piece of shit, I will say, and uh, basically uh, bagged on myself and my company, and just did a lot of nasty, like just really like poor, poor decisions, saying a lot of stuff, and uh, talking a lot of shit about stuff they didn't even know what they were talking about. And I just let them do it. I didn't even defend myself. But it pissed me off. And uh, it gave me a lot of uh, energy to make sure that I'm going to breed Bolins and breed them well. <laughs> and then keep a bunch of them and then have 30 adult Bolins to breed and make lots of them. And um, so that's that's like one of my objectives. I want to make it so we can put enough Bolins pythons out there that they're going to be affordable, and uh, then I'll probably start divulging some of my um, the secrets. But I don't want to go and divulge my secrets to people that uh, basically ragged on me and uh, made fun of me because I kept bones and racks. And uh, every time I we posted a bones thing, it was like some oh. Oh, it's one of their smuggled bowlings. Oh, it's too fat. Oh, it's this. He's keeping it wrong. But it, but it, 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 it. And it really, you know, it was, it was irritating. So I'm a, I got a bad, I got a bad attitude. <laughs> I, I really don't blame you with shit. I mean, how, how involved are you really with social media? I mean, how much shit are you really looking into? And, and like, you know, how much, how much stuff so do I, you I, I, post, I post and then I run away. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the way quite, to do it. But I do. Yeah, that's quite accurate. I don't. I, I don't want to so, go. I don't want to go and look at what you know horrible things are saying about me. My friends go and tell me the horrible things they're saying about me. It's good friends. Yeah. No, they're just keeping me aware, keeping in the loop. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. As, as you then, should. The downfall of that is that when we need him to do something that might follow a trend, so for a video or something, we have to then wait for him to find the information and digest it. So that we can then talk about it. <laughs> True. Yeah. True story. True. Well, no, the, the the ball python, the Nat Geo one, they wanted me to read that so we could talk oh, yeah, about yeah. it. And I, I, I'm like, I got to read it. And then I like read it. And then I was like, I want to argue. Yeah. I want to argue yeah, we, against this. We were in this room. We talked, we talked about it at, at length a little bit. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, just, I like to argue, just so you know. I'm, a, I'm very much into that. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I mean, it, I think the kind of arguing you're talking about is the shit that you know you're pretty fucking confident about that you're willing to go to fucking bat. For. I, I generally won't argue about stuff that I I don't think no. I know a, a, a lot about. I mean, I can easily, you know, I'm not going to go into a gunfight with a spoon, um, but I like gunfights. And uh, if I think I know something. And somebody's telling me something else. Uh, either I'll just shut up because I don't even want to uh, entertain that, or I'm going to argue it to death. But if I feel like I have credible information and I feel confident that I'm correct, I will argue it, and I do like to win. I, I I'm not. I'm pretty alpha when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> not for sure. Last. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of uh, bad like that. You know what? I got to make sure uh, people know that. On uh, we actually have a uh, YouTube channel on it's New England Reptile Distributors on YouTube. Anybody link, knows that? Link, link in the description below. All the information. That's, that's perfect. Below. Yeah, just want to make sure because Donnie's gonna. I don't want him to like get have an upset stomach in his hot pockets. <laughs> make is him that, what, is that what we thrive off of, Donnie? Hot pockets? Is that oh, how you? Dude, he's dude fucking, that's how we pay him, bro. Is it the ham and cheese or what is it? It's, he's he he doesn't have any specific flavor. It's just kind of like general quick, hot pocket quick diet. Hot. Quick and hot. Quick and hot, dude. That's how he likes it. That's that's the hot troglodyte sex of Johnny. <laughs> that, sounds like, that, sounds like how, that sounds like how Desiree feeds Steven, but no, his bills look expensive down there, huh? What, what's that? What's Steven? <laughs> what, what's Steven's feeding bill a month? I stopped what, paying that, for it because it got out of control. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I, <laughs> I had a feeling. And you're talking about what your feeding bill was at on a monthly. On oh, my feed bill? Yeah. yeah, but now now you're on on your own. I hear now. I heard you're uh, feeding yeah. yourself now. No, I'm like starving myself. I eat like maybe once or twice a day. Is that no. the, the ramen diet? No, he's eating meat. The, the air diet. The air. Oh, filter feeding. Yeah. <laughs> Photosynthesis. <laughs> Photosynthesis. <laughs> My xylem and phloem are passing glucose and sugar sweet. <laughs> I don't think we've touched on croc monitor breeding because I know that's what you're also doing, right? Well, no, I, I'm well, I'm I'm playing with croc monitors. I am certainly not an aficionado at that. It's uh, they're a they're a tricky animal because first of all, you, you know, you need room, and I've far maxed out my room potential. So they need like legitimate territories. Female croc monitors love to beat the <laughs> shit out of male croc monitors. Like it's like today I've decided that you're going to die or I'm going to inflict injuries on you. So uh, females you're saying, right? Females. Yeah, Females. I've, even though the yeah. female could be, you know, third smaller, she will absolutely set the tone and water monitors too. A lot of monitors, like once they're defending their nesting area, they can be the boss. Right. So I have, I, I have uh, still a lot to learn with croc monitors and I, I, I only, I'm dabbling on croc monitors, but you know, space, if I follow Brian, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do, but if I ever decide that I'm going to like, I've been entertaining like the whole zoo idea too, that would be a really good situation where I could kind of come with the kind of caging that I could, uh, Desiree, are you just going to keep laughing? Sorry, yeah. man. You're not reading the comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I would probably like to engage engage that again. But the trick for me is not to get too many different species of monitors because uh, the more I, I tend to dabble with, the uh, less um, good I am at something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely uh, – I think that's been something where – it's just, been, it's just something hella difficult to work with when it comes to shit like that. And uh, they're, you know, they're very, very difficult, and they're very intelligent, and they're very um, demanding on what they need, especially for nesting and all that different stuff. It's just uh, it's one of those those uh, animals you have to unravel. I don't think they're you know probably as hard maybe to figure out. Let's say as like a Boland's python, but the but they're right in that same league. I would say hiccups. What What's your monitor diet like in general across the board? All sorts of junk. 
<laughs> yeah, so. all, all sorts of we uh you know you'll chop up rodents whole rodents um all sorts of different you know chopped meats uh chopped chicken blah, 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 bone whatever it's a variety when they're little certainly uh insects uh being crickets and roaches to uh chopped meat uh lots of eggs um just all sorts of different stuff. I go over to the local Walmart and get some of their old sandwich meat and like the food at Walmart. Like, yeah, yeah. Up. I'm kidding. Yeah. And, I, and then I make oh, yeah. I make pizzas with it too. <laughs> After we get to pick through it, I mean, um, Joe Exotic, you know, like to yeah. the people. Expired yeah. meat, meat and meth. It's like you got it all, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 You no, but variety, variety on the monitors for so sure. I really think that's like a big thing because I was at Dalsu and we talked to them about breeding crack monitors and they said they've just been breeding and using rats the whole time. Like that's all they fed and they're successfully breeding. Well, crack. okay, but okay, so but these animals, they um they have taste buds and they have certain different things. So they get excited and they get burned out just eating the same thing. So uh, crock monitors love to eat chicken. So they'll absolutely eat rodents, but they also really like and you take uh you know chicken thigh and you quarter it and you start giving them pieces yeah. they really like it with the bone and all that different stuff so yeah mix it up but they'll also they'll, they'll eat ham they'll eat all sorts of beef they'll eat uh fish they'll eat shrimp da -da 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 -da. they'll eat you know salmon whatever eggs they'll eat eggs yeah. so i just i just like a bit of variety because in the wild they're gonna be eating birds you know yeah. the lizards are gonna be eating rodents they're opportunists you know, whatever yeah. they can get their, you know, their, their mouths on. If they're going to eat, they're going to eat. Yeah. That's crazy. My, uh, my yeah, first, I got like, I'm not going to lie, Kevin, your, uh, your, your videos inspired me so much to where like I wanted, uh, I have a guy locally, uh, by the name of Corey, who he, he deals with, uh, croc monitors and black dragons and whatnot. And, uh, I was set up and I was going to get a monitor through him. And, you know, we were still like a few months away. So in the meantime, I, I happened to come across a Nile monitor and I was like, Hey, you know, what? I heard these are hard to work with this thing's small. Like, let me see if I can get my fucking feet wet with it. You know what I mean? Like, let me, yeah. let me see what I got. Right. So basically it a year and a half later, it's fucking things four feet. It fucking, it, I'm, I'm getting gashed. I'm getting fucking like it, it won't eat in front of me. And I'm doing like, bro, I did your, your method and they work. I put the thing over my head and like, it would calm down and I would have really good threads, but then they would just always go like, no matter what they were, it was like clockwork, like two good threads and it would go to shit, two good threads and it's go to shit. And eventually i was like yo this is just i can't deal with this anymore like i just i don't ever feel like this thing's ever gonna get to a point where i could fucking you know like it, it was like going to war when anytime i had to take it out you know what i mean and yeah well there, there's a couple things so so you remember like when you when you pick a puppy you know the trick is you, know, you take a puppy and you turn it over on its back and what it needs to do is not just lay there uh it needs to fight you a little bit but if it, it just excessively fights you and just never stops that's not a good one. If it just lays there, it's too passive, maybe for what your intent of its training, that's not the right one. But you get that one that's just right, fights you a little bit, but then it stops and realizes that you're powerful and dominant. you got to pick the right animal. They're, some Niles are incredibly reactive. And a big animal like that, one of the things I would do is reduce the size of its cage, right? Bring it right down and go, for the next two weeks, it's you and me close. And I'm going to just break you because – as long as I'm that animal, I'm meeting the basic needs of that animal as far as temperatures and water and feeding. I'm going to reduce that thing's environment so it has to deal with me. And then I'm going to take a shirt that I wore and I'm going to throw that shirt in the cage so it's used to my smell. And, and there's, you know, there's all these different little tricks yeah. you can do. But the big environment, I think, is where I fucked up because yeah. I thought the big running environment. Running around, running around and running up the wall and bashing into the wall. That is all negative. That's a oh man, bad, bad, bad. So I felt was, bad. I was yeah. like, yeah, I was like, you have to, you have to precede what you're trying to do. Do I always want to keep an animal in a box and watch it run up the walls, but go, oh, I'm giving it a reasonable amount of room, so I'm being good to it that way, or do I want to get this animal to actually trust me that it actually isn't afraid of me, and then it values me as part of its life? I need to go and break it. You know, we put dogs in kennels and we do all these things that, but a dog's supposed to be running free in a field. But for some reason, people can understand 
that thing we do with dogs. But when we start putting an animal in a smaller cage that we don't think is letting it do what it normally would run around in the African savanna, they can't understand it. They just don't get it. And they don't need to be in the formula to what you're doing because they're not the one that's keeping that as your, as a pet. And that's what happened with you guys or with fucking you, Kush. You said you put baby Kush in a fucking big ass enclosure and he went ape shit after that. Yep. No, yeah. but we also oversensitized it right right away. Like you mm. said, like he should have came out of the bag, one person, and go right back. Closure, yeah, and it. then come back tomorrow. I, I do very we specific this thing for hours and filmed it and it was jumping all over the place and fed it right out of the bag. So I do these um videos how to unpack a monitor lizard. Mm -hmm. And those are very, very specific. Yeah. On how to do it. And you just, all you're just doing is waiting for the brain to catch up. That's all you're doing. And what you just did when you made it deal with this massive experience of all these people, yeah. it was like a blur. You gave it too much information. Mm -hmm. So it didn't adhere to one particular thing. It was just this whole thing. And then you threw it in the big cage and it's a big giant blur. And all of a sudden it's a big, scary world. And you reinforce, you know, it's, it's reactiveness. Man, that's fucking. I wish I would have known that, but I mean, at least I know now. Fuck, it's better known now than never. You, you, need, you needed to talk to the croc monitor whisperer. I'm like Caesar, whatever. Yeah, we'll on the, 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 the dog whisperer. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be pretty interesting. The croc monitor whisperer. I'd watch the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Let's, yeah. Let's, All let's, six let's, people in our audience. Let's, Hey, let's be honest, though, guys. Do you, I will never be honest. Okay. <laughs> nice. okay. Well, I mean, whatever. Give me your give me your thoughts, <laughs> and, and they could be true or false on this. I don't give a fuck. Um, with this whole Tiger King shit, right? Like with the whole like you know, mammal, you know, like you know, tiger, cat keepers and shit. Do you think snake keepers will ever get to that point or to that fucking? Do you think there ever be a snake king? Fucking like, you think we're ever at that thick of the drama or thick of the like? shit as far as like you know let's say like peak call and all these other like past no, i don't think okay and one thing is you have to figure out what what is all this ri rising on it's on tigers right, tigers yeah. how many people like that is just like the most exotic glorious thing that everybody if, if, if you're afraid of getting eaten by them you're like god look at a tiger True. people are going ew that thing looks too furry or whatever snakes <laughs> ah, you know slimy is this so we have all those things, but tigers, True. you know, it's a big expression of a house cat, yeah. and, you know, and all this different stuff. So your, your vehicle that it's all built on is greater than, or bigger than life. It's a tiger. It can fucking kill you. And it's the most exotic animal you can possibly think of. And how could you be that lucky where you could touch this amazing animal that could kill you? But it's only a baby, so it doesn't. So I'm safe, and right. it, it's just like a perfect formula. I don't think we're ever going to get that formula with uh, with snakes and lizards. Well, what, I, what I'm thinking is because look who look who was in that fucking documentary, uh, Tom, Tom Crutchfield. Yeah. yeah, and that's connecting to snakes. And you know, Tom, you know, fucking they. What do they call him? What's his uh? What does he go by? Uh, uh, lizard Jane. Jane. No, oh. lizard. King, but there's a there's a there's another name he he gives himself. It's fucking the oh the Mick Jagger or something like that or I, I forget. Know. There's like a rock star name he gave himself. But yeah, uh, anyway. well that that's that's quite true. He is definitely uh, in the reptile industry. He's definitely a rock star. So I just figured what how much connection that has with it. You know what I mean? Because you know, it's um, Tom. Well, Tom was they started filming that with Tom thinking you know. We got this guy, he's got all these venomous snakes, and uh, 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 and that yeah. was remarkable. And then the guy jumped ship and he went after the cats right. with the uh the snow leopard was it snow or cloud of leopard? Snow leopard, snow leopard, snow snow leopard. leopard. yeah. I was in the van. <laughs> that was McCarthy or whatever, right? McCarthy's uh zoo or whatever. Yeah, and and that just uh, because that was a better ultimately a better target to be digestible. To the public and and you know yeah. what kind of people have watched it now everybody's talking about it mm -hmm. i don't know if you're ever going to get that with snakes you could because 
oh, I can't even look at that. I can't even look at that. You know, they're all you know scared of them and geeked out and they just they're just so maligned. It, it, there's just so much negativity to snakes that we're never going to be able to get past. Yeah, my seems. mom still won't mess with them, and I've been doing this ten years. And she, but she likes the lizards. Just the yeah, because they have legs and they're yeah, just bl and they blink more, and they get this tongue and yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill lizard. Is is eat. there anything that you think can get the world past that, or at least I we, we try we try all the time. What and, about what about collab what about collabing with celebrities and shit? Getting those like bigger people involved who like spread the word and like you know what I mean? Like that I think do you think that ha that could have an impact at some point? Well, clearly celebrities are your gateway people to, you know, you have somebody playing with something and then they all think about it. You know, Ryan Reynolds plays with a cow reticulated python, and that probably has a noticeable or tangible mark on people's willingness to touch a snake and all that but is it ever going to be cute and furry that is you know the thing is the tiger when it's big can kill you that's not largely the same kind of thing with the big snake but a lot of people think our snakes want to kill you they want to choke you and all this different shit and they got it completely wrong and they're not willing to give it a chance whereas anytime i show you a baby tiger that's still a kitten Everybody's going to flock to that. That is literally chick magnet material. <laughs> I mean, you, ah, that's like, I mean, look at what, look what Doc does. He just gets himself up <laughs> uh, a stable, Whoa, a stable of, of women in it. And, and, and they're all, yeah, they're, he just sits there on his throne. He sit there with his long, you know, with his fucking look. Yeah, with his absolutely. He's a boss. He's a boss, bro. He's very player for sure. Yeah, I'm it's, not gonna lie. And you know, it's funny because they try to, you know, you could tell they try to put shit on him, and he's like, I don't give a fuck. Like he just laughs it off. Yeah, that's like, that's that's a really great way to be to just to be able to let that water run off. That's a very hard mindset. It's super hard. I think it takes time, and it takes a lot of going through shit. You have to like literally build your emotion, your immune system, to where like you've been shitted on so many times where. It's just like you're fucking just Brian. Super. Brian's definitely getting he's, he's getting, getting he's getting there. And uh I give him a lot of credit. Even you know, he'll even say a nice lot. comments to to savage douchebags. And that's the thing, bro. And then like, you know, I, I back people up like Brian all the time, but you really you can't back him up every time because it's overwhelming. It's just you're always gonna have some piece of shit fucking hating on something that really isn't really relevant to anything he's talking about like you know the whole mic thing like really like fucking brian what, like he said like name a customer i've ever given mics in the last seven years Dude, you know that, that that is absolutely so we're literally picking and choosing you know uh, to say you don't have mites or say you haven't that, that is absolutely it's yeah. it's it's fiction it's make-believe yeah. for all the animals that he has to ever, you get people that send you animals with mites you yeah. get mites that like you couldn't have mites for four months and all of a sudden one day they, they oh, pop yeah. up and something dude it it constantly these things happen but this is real but the problem is we have to groom this shit so much for social media media it's make it digestible it has to be so perfect it's all make-believe yeah and, but it's people are literally living in make-believe if it's a it's a facade it's all a fucking it's facade. so sad like, look, everybody takes pictures of themselves on Instagram and they're going through a filter and doing this and take 20 pictures of whatever to get it just right. But it's it's make believe we're expecting yeah. grandeur in things that really aren't like that unless you get a little glimpse of it. And it's, it's really sad. Yeah. And reality sad a lot yes. of times, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's there's a lot of other things that get you to rise above that fucking the the sad reality that we do have to go through on a day to day. Because as far as the shit that you're doing, Kevin, I mean, I know it motivates the fuck out of Steven. It motivates the fuck out of me. Everyone who's been watching this, which you know, fifty, I'm mean, at fifty some people. That's a lot of people for us. <laughs> we're, having, we're, having people. we're having an amazing time. This is great. I think we're all in a good place now, right? Yeah. Well, you certainly got people to get uh, an idea of me. So if any of people in your audience don't know who I am, uh, they're really going to be screwed up now because they're like, 
Is this guy for real? No, they're going to be saying that's why Kevin hasn't been in a video in a while. <laughs> He's going crazy. <laughs> not, I, guys, I'm definitely not going crazy. I, I, I have a complete handle on this. I just, I, I like to be uh, ridiculously sarcastic and I joke. I make fun of myself because I can't take any of this seriously because we are just keeping these animals as pets. This is a luxury to us. It's not, this is not reality. This is just, something we're fiddling with we're creating our own we're creating our own fucking dream our own fantasy yeah, yeah we are literally and, it, and this is what makes us happy it's what makes me miss what makes me fucking happy I ain't gonna lie going to fucking yeah. walking into a room full of fucking snakes that at one point i didn't have any and now i have i don't know how many i don't know but i enjoy every single fucking bit of it day to day I enjoy it. and it's awesome that's like what the passion is um let's talk about fucking shows real quick man because i mean in the earlier days with like the, you know, the uh, Daytonas and the fucking, you know, Tinleys and shit, you, you, were you pretty involved with that? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. How, how were those days? I mean, because you're not... Oh, yeah. You could go there. So I, I certainly got attention because I like to make things look a certain way and my I have a certain idea of how I want to present things. So I was always pretty good about presenting stuff. And then having like maybe the good animals to back it up. You know, I always had like this thing, you know, uh, New England reptile and no junk. You know, I didn't like to, I, I sold, you know, a lot of reptiles, but I, I was very proud about trying to make sure my animals were of high quality and, and to be what I claim they were. And, uh, you know, I've always carried that through to even, even now. But, you know, you get to go there and you get to show off your animals and show off all the cutting edge stuff. Um, now it's it's just so much work and so much effort, and we can do this, you know, through social media, and uh, you know, you're giving uh, your fans and customers a lot more access to you, so they get to see what you're about. But generally, you know, when you're buying a reptile from somebody, you're buying maybe that high quality animal, but you're also buying like a, a sense of the animal, who you're getting it from, and all the different stuff. And I think some of that has you know a value uh you know when you're certainly when you're doing more expensive or rare animals you're buying like a brand and you're buying like a a, a bit of a relationship with that uh person and their experience and how they can pass some uh, critical information about those animals to you and when you go to a show so much stuff is happening it's so fast you people are going around they're looking for like prices yeah. Cheap. I want cheap, cheap, cheap. And they're always dictated by that. And you really, you know, like the shows have become like a flea market. The animals are not as special. At least the common ones are not as special. And it wasn't like that before. And now it is. And I really, I, I, I'm not really warmed up to that whole idea. Yeah. I don't blame you. Flea market. I just not really into it. It's a very, it's, it's, it's a, it's an opportunity for someone to have a very bad first experience Second, third, fourth, twelfth, fortieth, all of it. Yes. Remember, all it takes is one. Sometimes, you know. Oh, and, you, can, you get a diseased animal. Oh, it can be bad. Think about stuff. Like think about like you know. I see like a lot of young teenagers and shit. You know, like maybe scrounge somehow. Fucking what? Five hundred dollars. But they're all excited. And like I see it with my own eyes. They they never kept an animal and they just buy a chondro. And I'm like, fuck, I'm scratching. And I'll even like, I'll even like, hey, have you ever kept one of those before? And like, and he'll be like, no, it's my first time. And I'm like, I think it's so dead. And it's like a really nice neonate. And it's like, and it's like at the I used to, I got tired of witnessing that shit. And like, listen, I go to shows because I love meeting people that I connect with on social media. And I feel like that's my true, like, that's what connects me to shows. And you know, uh, there are some people I like that that friends of mine who sell some really awesome shit, but then on the other side, there's people that are just fucking picking up animals who have no idea what the fuck they're doing, and I can't do that. Like I know at some point maybe I will be like I, I don't I can't explain to everybody why they need to do research. I mean I don't know. I just I hope I hope not. I hope I don't get to the point where I have to sell an animal and not give the, this person the time of day to explain what they need to do to keep this animal alive. Well, well, some of it, yeah, some of it gets to be. I mean, they need to also do their due right. diligence, and you're not necessarily there to take somebody from no not knowing the difference between a ball python and a green tree python and being able to eloquently express the refined differences and make sure they have their husbandry because they have to do due diligence. And that's, what's nice about social media and yeah. having a brand online and having some information online about, you know, you may keep a green tree Python 
or whatever snake uniquely different that allows you to be successful. And it might take a while to pass that on to your customer, if at all. A lot of times you can't. And a lot of times customers will treat your techniques or your critical thinking, they'll treat that very nonchalant and then they'll hybridize that information with something else they read on the internet or what somebody else did and they'll ruin how that animal's managed and then they can fail with that animal. And it's, those are some of the realities that we have to deal with now. And it's very, very frustrating. When I tell people, this is the way I want you to do your monitor. This is the way I want you to do your bones. This is the way I want you to do the Amazon basin. And they don't do it. They don't adhere to it. But it's it, like, look at it, that kind of mistake you're making. Like that's fucking like, dude, that's, how do you go? Like, how do you not do, how do you not do your due diligence? Like, how do you not do the fucking things you need to do to keep an animal like that thriving and going? It's it just beyond me. And it's, it, it, it hurts. It well, sucks. But, but you know what? Sometimes people don't have the mental acuity to actually to nail it. They just don't understand. You're, and I, one thing I learned a long time ago is I used to talk to people like I was talking to myself. So if I figured if I could take somebody that has a brain like me and then I, I just need to unload this information, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, got it. Yep, and, that's what it is. and then, bam, they're going to have the understanding of the basic things. After it took me years to realize you can't talk to them like you're you, Kevin. You have to talk to them like they're whoever they are. And you need to try to pick up that they're not getting and they're not understanding it. I always – if you watch me in a bit videos, I sometimes repeat stuff because I'm painfully trying to be clear to people because I, I want to make it so they're not missing a critical nuance. That's and, and that's why I repeat those things because they're if you can't get that point, you're not going to be successful. I think you're so right about that because like, I mean, I'm only three years or so into this and I like, I have a barrier sometimes trying to explain certain things to people and it's because I'm fucking talking to them. Like if I'm talking to myself and mm -hmm. dude, how it do took you me a long time to figure that one out? Yeah, I really... it, it, like Honestly, the way you just said it just knocked a fucking, it just knocked some sense in my head because it's like, man, maybe that's it. Like maybe it's the, uh, you know, the whole, not only delivery, but it's, I'm talking to somebody who maybe understands the fucking type of, you know verbiage and knowledge that i know you know and it's for the most part it's not they have no fucking idea so <laughs> and, and sometimes so if you're talking to somebody who could be a nitwit if i give them too much sorry That's but right. if i give them too much information i'm going to do what happened to that croc monitor and it's a blur yeah, yeah. It, it's a blur so something i have to like dumb it down and then I want to do it even in stages. So sometimes I'll do like these painful videos where, you know, I'm, I'm going back to basics, but I'm doing that because I'm trying to create, you know, that foundation. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to really be able to read people or try to read people and then uh, judge who you're talking to. And then, you know, uh, if they're really progressive, you can really bomb them with all information because they're able to take it in and they're able to plug all those little fine nuances into a working model. But if you're talking to somebody who's really basic, you need to just hit those basic points so they grasp the, you know, the legitimate stuff. Yeah. At what point in your career in your life did you stop talking to people? Like when did you start talking to people less? Because now you have, you know, you have, you know, you have Jeremy, you have fucking crew of people who do a lot oh, of that. Uh, quite a while ago. So and quite then, a while ago. I've I've uh, yeah I've, I became reclusive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is why this is so important, man. The shit you're saying right now, like I'm, my phone's blowing up and they're like, fuck, this guy's dropping like, like, I mean, I've learned multiple shit. You know, I'm all, I've learned that somebody could call me a pussy and a bitch and I could just take it and not fucking. <laughs> not, that's, that's definitely straight. Yeah. You just got it. It's, it's just gibberish words. I'm so happy. I feel so I'm proud. My, my dad's like, dude, good job, dude. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, dad. Thank so you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an amazing guy. But no, honestly, it's like, I feel like your knowledge is just beyond fucking like you said you have books, which I mean, is there links to that? I don't, I mean, I need to know if, if you just go like on Amazon, Kevin McCurley ball Python, just write something like that. And you'll find like books. I have a publisher that will publish any single thing I, I write. It's just, <laughs> you know, the amount of time, uh, my last book, which was the ultimate guide to ball pythons. So that's like 740 pages. That took me in, you know, in my spare time about a year to kind of conjure that together. And, you know, they want me to do stuff on reticulated pythons, uh, monitor uh, reptile behavior. And I just haven't got myself in that mindset right now that I want to do it. But uh, 
it's well received when I do do it. Do you have so any? Far. Do you have any tips as far as keeping mindset where it needs to be? I mean, dude, you work with so many animals. I'm sure there's been times where you've even asked yourself, "What the don't, fuck?" Don't 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 spread yourself like conquer a species or a few species. But if you spread yourself thin and you're just like, "I want this and I want that," and it, 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 it. first of all, if you have a reptile room, you have one environment essentially. And now you're pushing all these different animals with all these little micro niches of their environments. And you know, something that wants more humidity, something that wants that cooler cycle when you're breeding it. And you have all these conflicts and myself included. So at some point I had to like step back. I got to focus more. I got to be really, I want to be really good at breeding this. And I want to be really good at that. So pick your targets, give yourself goals. What is your goal? I want to keep these for just to be able to keep them and keep them in a beautiful plant the terrarium. I want to keep them because I want to breed them. I want to keep them because of, you know, whatever it is, but give yourself a, a doable goal that you don't lose sight of. Yeah. Goals are what gets you noticed by other people. When you mm -hmm. succeed, you know, if you're just going to keep a hodgepodge collection of animals and maybe you just want to be a pet tuber and you just want to uh -huh. talk about how cute they are. And, and, and I guess maybe that makes certainly makes more money than I do. As far as you know, on YouTube, but it doesn't do anything that's uh, credible in the history of reptile keeping and, and among your peers. Your peers are not going to notice you because you you keep uh, a snake room full of uh, a reptile room full of, of reptiles and you show them to people. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really have a. We've really simplified things. We've taken away this the uniqueness and the specialness of things and we've just come down to the point where I can just pull out dollies out of a box and make them do stuff. And for some reason I have an audience. I don't understand. Dude, I really don't. So it fucking shocks me. Like you, this girl will be like, hi, my name's Tabitha. Here's this fucking mangrove and it has foam coming out of its mouth and I'm going to rescue it. And like, I look and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and she's like just showing pictures of all these fucked up animals that like she's taking in. And they're just fucking, I am Tabitha. I, I don't know what her name is. Hey, like, look at my tits. <laughs> yeah, dude. All of a sudden they just got a hundred subscribers, you know, no. or here's another no. thousand or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> okay, you're a pretty girl and we're, we're men and we're driven by testosterone. So we're going to like listen to what you're saying. But at some point where, where does that, uh, you know, where is that? You know, at some point I want to, you know, the pretty or attractive person. I need to have some validity of what the hell they're saying. Yeah. But, 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 but like you said, okay, they have a huge following. And then you have people like, you know, I'm not going to name the community, fuck it, <laughs> ball python community, who are right. fucking like tagging up with them and collabing and promoting them too. And like, you know, hey guys, follow them. And it's like, dude, uh... why are you fucking... Why are you promoting that? Like, just to get fucking followers too? Like, that's not helping. Like, that's that. Excuse me. He said that's what it's, it's all about. Yeah, yeah. it's no, uh, it's yeah, because it's it goes it goes like, to that validity of like, it's 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 about who you know, not what you know. Mm -hmm. Especially with a species like that, that's that's generally speaking so much easier to to maintain and, and reproduce. And if you, you know, know nobody, if you know nobody, then you're a nobody. Yeah, That's so it, it's it's painful. Like I'll sit there. I generally don't watch a lot of reptile related stuff um, because I'll sit there and watch it, and I'm just like, oh, I just I'm not. I guess I'm not learning anything, or I'm not mentally being challenged. I'll go watch videos about ants or tropical fish, where I'm like, okay, this person is laying down a ton of info on me, and I'm eating it up. I love that. I don't see a lot of that with like a lot of the reptile stuff. Although clearly there are reptile entities where I can learn a lot of stuff, but um, I, I'm seeing a lot of like show and tell playing or like you said, the collaboration and stuff like that. And that doesn't, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't hold me, I guess, or not saying that any of these people aren't, you know, worthwhile. It's just for somebody like me with my brain and my mindset and where my brain is it's not something i'm just gonna uh waste my time on i suppose yeah well how would you say like would you try to grab that average viewer 
to try to, you know, to get them to listen to the more mentally stimulating content that's actually pushing stuff forward. I don't, I, well, I, you know, I guess you have to do clickbait or something like that. Cause you know, we've been growing our channel, our channel, we have almost a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube and that's about, I, we've only been, we've been working on our channel for real for about a year. Right. And, um, Brian told me, but that. I don't know. We do some videos on ball pythons. I just like to do videos on just whatever is interesting at the, at the time. And, um, I like to show stuff where we can offer content that is, uh, maybe a little bit unique or it's a little bit, not, you know, just the same things being repeated. I certainly have a very, um, different way at looking reptiles than maybe a lot of other people. And I do like to try to interlace or weave that into, you know, the message of our channel, but I don't think I'm certainly uh, privy to great ways to get a huge following uh, with my uh, ideas and the way we're doing it. You know, uh, clickbait seems to be the best way to get people there. And we we've done probably very little clickbait uh, only because I just don't want people to, uh, you know, dog on me and just say how cheesy I am. I hate clickbait, but I understand it. Like I have, you know, there's, there's, there's people out there who do YouTube full time. Like it's their fucking gig. Yeah. And I get, I get, I understand why, you know, here, here and there they have to fucking, you know, real people in, but like, it's like, it's kind of bizarre because it's shit like, Oh, guy gets choked and killed or guy gets choked by Python at show. And it's just a guy who has a python over his neck. It's no Yeah, weird. but see, I'd never do that kind of stuff because I know oh, I that I know the long-term consequences of all that. So like, you know, I'm very much into, you know, don't do live feed videos, don't do this. I'm always trying to paint these in a positive way because I always want to be I don't want to be embarrassed that I'm embarrassing the reptile community. So I want to be like one of those people like, "All right, Kev, at least, you know, he's a clown, but he also has a, you know, he can, you know, when it gets down to it, I can just lay down facts and be very credible and do stuff that makes other, you know, people in the industry that I'm representing, I make them at least go, all right, I like this guy. This guy is, you know, not painful to listen to and be credible because uh, we're under constant attack and I'm very, very aware of that. And I don't want to do things that are going to um, negate us publicly in the industry. Uh, so I try to be responsible and I always have that kind of like in the background, even, you know, when I'm, I'm joking around cause you know, I, I'm, I have to make, you know, mockery of myself cause I can't take myself seriously, but I don't want to do things to make us look, you know, terrible. You want to read that comment right there? <laughs> yeah, I've already heard that one a bunch. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, I, 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 I have a friend who actually knows Ted Nugent and he says, Oh my God. He goes, you're so much like Ted Nugent. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's uh, I, I take that as a great compliment. Ted oh, Nugent yeah. is, is uh, are you kidding me? Super progressive minded. I mean, uh, he's a, he's a hunter and stuff, but I have, you know, I have, you know, I don't even, I'm like a vegan. So I stopped kind of like pretty much eating animals a while ago, just cause I, I don't want animals to die every time I want to eat. But I, I'm not like dogging on hunters either because hunters keep places wild. And yeah, I, I'd rather see people hunting than a, a strip mall or whatever. But Ted Nugent is just, he's so edgy. He's so fast minded and so progressive and highly intelligent. So I regard that as a, a really uh, a great compliment, even though I don't want to go out and kill every animal that I'm seeing. Although he loves animals too. He kills them, but I just, I can't do it. Cause I'd like kill the animal. I'm like, ah! and I have such empathy for animals. I love animals. Man's got to eat. They do, but they don't have to eat an animal, but whatever. Do you not eat meat, Kevin? I'm, I'm a cheating vegan. Yeah. I try, I try not to eat meat. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's a cheating vegan? Occasionally I'll eat like eggs or something okay. like, you know, pizza or something <laughs> like, you know, whatever, but it's uh but no yeah. meat. Uh, yeah, if, I mean, I might eat meat maybe a couple times in a year. If you're or, in Mexico, if there's, you're in Mexico and there's some fucking bomb ass, like carne asada or, or adobada and nothing, nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 when I was down, so that was, I've only been like, uh, cheating, like vegan for, uh, I don't know, like two and two, maybe this, maybe three years, this like coming like September. And, uh, I, I was just, uh, 
it was just like a, a just like a personal thing. I'm not like bashing on uh, other people or anything like that. I just don't seem to think that an animal needs to die every time I want to eat something. And I can I can go off. I'm very knowledgeable about uh, uh, your GI tract and your human biome and uh, about the digestion of meat. Yeah. And blah blah blah. I can go on and zap you with a whole bunch of different stuff but uh i i, I won't do it but it's um no, that's that's right i i could tell you what my friend at one point convinced me to like eat less meat and i did pretty well like, i didn't eat no meat for like a month yeah and i felt amazing yeah and, and then i had my destination wedding in mexico and yeah. all that, oh all, yeah yeah all that went to shit and i just at- came back and i was like oh i love meat again and i no. fucking, and now i'm just sitting in this fucking hellhole again where i just eat meat every day yeah and, uh, and only because I run out of ideas, bro. Like, I'm a picky eater, and I get fucking really bored with shit, and I just can't eat a salad. Or a it's not just a salad. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> dude, it's like, dude, it's not like – so uh, So let's let's get one thing, okay? I'm not like a passive, like, vegan-y type thing. I'm like into, like, martial arts and stuff, like, you know, like mu- – Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. Right. So he and, screams the word lettuce down the hall as he throws cabbage at us. Does he, no. kick, <laughs> does he kick bamboo outside the building and shit? Is he fucking out there just fucking hitting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that would hurt my shin. <laughs> but no, but I just don't want to make sure you think that I'm like some uh, frail, like uh, I'm uh, pseudo, I'm, I'm like hostile and aggressive and all that. And you can still do that by eating uh, vegetable based protein, but there's all sorts of things you can eat. They've reverse engineered so much of the different stuff. Yeah. So there's something called um, beyond meat. So you can get beyond yeah. beef, like burgers yeah, yeah. and beyond beef sausages. It's yeah. literally ridiculously yeah. good. It's so yummy, yeah. My wife but they, they make so much different stuff. But so when you eat meat, you have an immediate inflammatory reaction. <laughs> Your gut acid is not designed to digest meat. So when you eat a hamburger, your weak stomach acid is struggling to digest that because you don't want to get something called pancreatitis. Yeah. So you dump a shitload of acid into your stomach. You have something called an acid index for all the different foods you eat. So it takes X amount of acid to digest that. So a hamburger is very complicated and it takes a lot of acid to digest. So you got all this acid in your stomach. Now you've digested the hamburger. How are you going to neutralize the acid? You need to release something that is alkaline and base. That happens to be calcium. And calcium is removed from your bones because your bones are essentially a place where you store all this calcium in these little pores. And um, if you eat a lot of meat and you're dumping tons of acid in your stomach, eventually you can get things like uh, you get little ulcerations. uh, You can get a a, a basically heartburn. You can get uh, acid reflux. You can get hiatal hernias. You can get uh, all these different things that will get you later in life, and that, uh, and you also can get uh, basically uh, porous bones. You can get uh, osteoporosis. That's all basically called metabolic acidosis. And um, but you are not a carnivore. You are not an omnivore. Don't forget, I'm an animal guy. So I look at people. I don't look at the Bible. That's nothing. In as far as I look at animals, people are animals. That's all we are. So you are a frugivore. You have a weak stomach acid. You have a long gut. Your di- your digestive system is designed to take a long time to digest cellulose and plant-based material. Um, if you look at a dog or a wolf, they have a very short gut. They have a gut that has a very powerful acid that can break down tendon and fats. We're not good at that. Your snake's digestive system, very, you know, it's very designed to eat this kind of stuff. Um, But people, because we can eat it, we think therefore we should eat it. And because it tastes yummy and it has fat and salt and sugars, we think we should eat it. But uh, literally all the, you know, diseases and stuff like that, a lot of those diseases, largely all the diseases and health consequences we're having is basically based on our diets we eat like shit and we're eating the wrong things i feel like a piece of shit just no to you're saying i don't that. feel like a piece of shit but it's there's like i'll tell yeah. you, you you want something that's really enlightening go onto youtube and there's something called uh you know ted talks yeah you want to read uh let's see uh robert knight i think it is robert knight is 
or Ted, Ted Knight, Robert Knight, uh, Microbes and Your Gut. It's 17 minutes. You have about three and a half pounds of microbes in your gut that define who you are. It is literally amazing. And if people don't understand what's going on inside them, you're uh, foolish not to understand like some of these basic ideas. And this is so on point and it makes you just sit here and go, are you kidding me? And that's what it does to me. And that kind of stuff is I'm really appreciate those kind of mindsets. I am very right. progressive. I'm very. Right. I'm writing all this down. Yeah, microbes in your gut. It's unbelievable. You 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 have these all this biome in your stomach and how you digest things and it, who it makes you how it makes you susceptible to disease, how it gives you gastrointestinal issues, all sorts of different things and it's all based on these other things that are living inside you. And every time you eat food that's not um, good for them. You put them through a lot of stuff and then you pay the price. And if you feed them what they want to be fed, they behave differently and you have a better, um, health for it. Well, yep. There you go. I'm hungry. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, I'm, I think I'm going to fast myself until I get every piece of shit of fucking thing. That's I want to go eat. A and then I'm going to start eating rabbit food and fucking slow. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to eat rabbit no, no, no. food. I've been eating like shit for so long, Kevin, where I maybe need to. Like, I'm fine. Oh, it's, it, dude, I'll tell you. You eat clean for two weeks. You weigh yourself to the day and you write down a little log how you feel. Well, I'm feeling sluggish and I'm more depressed and all these different things. And you write it down. So you record it. You have something that you can refer to. Mm -hmm. Two weeks of eating clean with no cheating. You don't weigh yourself for two weeks. Weigh yourself two weeks later and then write down and think about how you feel now i did this this is i just did this out of fun and i was like oh my god i feel differently and i'm like am i lying to myself i'm like i'm gonna just stick out this for like another two weeks and after i did it for like a, a month i was like this is real this is so real and it has very uh, strong um differences that are so tangible but most people, we can't do it. We're not strong enough or we don't have the mindset or you want to make fun of people that are not eating meat or processed, you know, largely processed foods because, you know, we're, we're just weak and we just like to uh, follow our palate, whatever tastes yummy we want to eat. It. Take the easy way out. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So that's what I do. And that's, I mean, I have so we many. We all do. It's, it's in our nature. Yeah. yeah. I've been in the fitness industry. Like I fucking sold package of fitness packs to people talked about diets and i've never like never followed the shit that i would fucking tell people but, like, but that's i think that's classic i think we all do that because we have all little moments yeah. and as long as we aren't surrounding ourselves with people that are enablers to to do all those negative things it's like the person that quits decides to quit smoking and then he's hanging around five smokers oh dude just don't you miss it uh, those are fucking they all suck because they're all contrary to what you're trying to do but what they're doing is they're bringing you down because you're threatening to them because you're a smoker and you quit smoking and you changed it. All oh, mental fucking thing, dude. It's all weak. Being stronger. It's, it's, it's about eventually it's about getting over your fucking bullshit, which people have to do on their own. You know what I mean? It's and but then there's some people who just don't get over it and they just fucking live a miserable life. Most people don't get over it. Come on. Think about it. Think how. No, they, they don't. 100%. Um, well, we're not going to go a depressing route with this. We're going to go ahead and. <laughs> <laughs> but it's honestly, man, whatever. This is like, like, this is, I think this is, relates to like why you're so dialed in with your animals. I mean, if you know how the fuck the human body works, can you imagine how you know well fucking animal works when it comes to digesting shit? Something, like, something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm always, you know, always learning and you're always tweaking stuff, you know, you're always like, adjusting. Do you feel like it's almost related in a way? Like, you know, with. Yes. That's how come I think I understand the human uh, mechanism because of the animals. I mean, think about it. We're all dialing in our husbandry. Our husbandry allows us to keep these animals successfully, maintain them, maybe potentially even breed them if they're that happy. We can't do that unless we dial in the husbandry. But we're completely, you know, it's like, okay, I got a bearded dragon. All right, I want you to shred that fucking hot pocket up there and give it those <laughs> juju bees. And then um, it's going to like blast like a bunch of that uh, grated up baby, uh, you know, uh, Butterfinger. <laughs> and like, you know, the thing's over there eating it. And it's like, 
hey, dude, it's got metabolic bone disease. It's egg bound. It's it's eyes. It can't it can't walk. Okay, because I kept it completely wrong. But humans, we seem to be able to do that great. And just because we can stick in our mouth, we think that's fine. Because I can go to a store, and the store is filled with literal shit, yeah. and we we can buy it. And it and it's we're we're satisfying our taste buds and our ideas. It, it's ridiculous. So ridiculous. We're so stupid. Every, we are so arrogant in our ideas and our self glorifications. It's every junkie's nightmare right now. Every junkie, which is me, it's fucking like fuck, it's it's so much truth because it's like I mean, the only reason why I ever feel like shit is because of shit I just ate. Like, like, you know what I mean? And it's like, it leads into like, you know, I mean, I don't know how many other people out there wake up in the morning and then they're like, fuck, my stomach feels, I feel like shit. I'll tell you one, let me tell you one thing. Anybody here that includes dairy in their life, cut dairy you're, out. you're fools. You're I'm literal not. fools. There's nothing, dairy. there's not a good thing you can say about dairy. Uh, dairy is casein protein. It's got uh incredible amount of cholesterol, saturated fats, all the... The casein protein is like a cancer superfood. So if you're a woman and you include uh, eight ounces or more of uh, milk or dairy into your life, you're increasing your chances of breast cancer like in the 20 something percent. It's uh, it, it is literally amazing. So if somebody actually gets diagnosed with cancer, one of the first things you could probably do is to become a legit vegan. Uh, you're changing your, your body pH. Your body pH is like dialed in. You have the strongest immune response around a 7.3. But if you're eating all the shit like you do, MJ, your body is more acidic. So you're in a constant state of metabolic acidosis where your body is yeah. being traumatized by the amount of acid you're dumping into your body. And then your meta constant state of metabolic acidosis is going to cause at some point your, your hip flexors and all this different stuff are going to cause like this ache and pains. You're going to feel older when you shouldn't. And all that different shit. Those are all these inf inflammatory type things that are going to happen to you. Right. But if you drink milk, don't be a fool. Stop drinking milk. Drink almond milk. Drink oat milk. Yeah. Drink silk. Yeah. Drink yeah. something else. But do not drink milk. Milk is god awful for you. Every human is lactose intolerant. You're not designed to to have all that. It just some people. That drinks another species of milk. Yeah, you're right. And it's way more protein than we need. We don't need all that protein. And it's casein protein. Casein protein is not good. It, it's it's literally it's bad. It's literally bad for you. And um I don't know. We could go on, doctors but I don't want to So out. now MJ doctors can... don't know shit about nutrition. No, they literally told me with my one year old, they're like, You need to get him on whole milk right away. I was like, Well, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you know what? That's a great way for so, so we now have type two diabetes that is now associated with don't make me start talking about endothelial cells. Endothelial oh, cells oh, between your blood right. vessel and your smooth uh, muscle, and it basically regulates the blood sugars out of your bloodstream into your muscles. And when you mire it all up with cholesterol and saturated fats and all this plaque, it prevents your endothelial cells from working well and your blood sugars spike. You can't let your blood sugars get into your muscle because your endothelial cell keyway is now clogged with all the plaque and you get insulin resistance, so to speak. But that's actually means that you're eating meat and you're eating dairy and you have uh, arthrosclerosis. So if you stop eating all that shit for a month, and all of a sudden, your endothelial cell keyways open up and your blood sugars can now start going into your muscles like they're supposed to. You can reverse type 2 diabetes. We uh, give it to ourselves. I'm terrified. <laughs> well, listen, I'm really glad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Guess who's in the chat right now? Who? Rob. And he's like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it real with Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Rob, guy's awesome. Rob is Rob is uh one of, one of our sales managers. He's 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 yeah fun. he's yeah. here in the live streams with us when we do our Twitch live streams. He's he's heard this numerous times. So now MJ, you can feel shit after you eat your bad food and every time you talk to Kevin. I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have anything bad after this. I'm fucking putting everything down the shithole, dude. I'm good. <laughs>
<laughs> my, listen, my wife, my wife, fucking, has been a personal trainer for I don't know how many years. She eats all the rabbit food that I'm fucking weird that we're talking about, and I just mean like lentils and like the really. I don't know. I'm giving it a chance now. I'm over this shit. <laughs> Kevin knocks some sense into me, dude. <laughs> I think your choice of words. It was just very impactful. Like the whole, like, uh, I don't know. How do you guys feel, Desiree, other than fucking laughter? And I fucking hate milk. I don't <laughs> want to give it to Lars at all. Like, shit me up. I argued with the doctors, and she just, like, your doctors, Your doctor's a moron. I know. I told her. Sorry, that. your doctor's a fucking moron. Yeah, I said bitch. But it's so it's so ridiculous. So, yeah. so and bad. And you know what? He gets a tummy ache if I try giving him milk, and he's all bitchy and farting. So, so like, yeah, farting. No more milk. We're done with the milk. I yeah, got uh, it. <laughs> my God, keto morphines and milk and <laughs> ice cream. That's the same, like it feeds the receptors like of a morphine addict or a heroin addict mm -hmm. in our yeah, brains. And that's the bond between a calf and, and a cow because you get those good feels. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've had a tough day. I just need to eat some ice cream. What we're doing is we're satisfying the ketomorphine receptors in our brain, which is coming from the dairy that we're having. So milk and all that shit is all laced with ketomorphine. And uh, it takes a couple of weeks of not eating it. For that, those receptors to go quiet. Yep. Yeah, I'm done with it. All right, you guys done with me? I want to go run away. Okay, bye. Yeah. Uh, before you before you fucking go hit the stage, um, dude, you have a lot of support, man. You have so many people out there that are fucking just they ride or die with you, man. What what's your what what do you have for them? Do you have any you have any words for your you know the viewers, but people who look up to you, anybody who's looking to oh, fuck? I love I love that. I mean, I, I'm I'm like truly. Um, I can be very modest too because I love that like people actually give me like you know like my my ideas like the time of day and and I love it when they listen to me and then there's some kind of enlightenment on on what they're doing. That's what I really love. I love it when I can take my ideas that I just make up in my little goofy head and then express it and then somebody else can copy it and then go, oh my God, I can do something with one of my animals. You taught me how to do that. That is so wonderful and I don't get tired of hearing that and I really do appreciate it. And it's, you know, uh, it's, it's nice to have a good solid base of uh, fans, I guess. Um, <laughs> I certainly take that and then everybody just like bagging on me and just that guy sucks and fucking loser and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So I like, but I, I honestly, I, I, I'm very humbled by uh, people uh, giving me the time of day to like, listen to my ideas. Well, I think people are going to really appreciate what you, uh, what you gave us in the last fucking just shy under four hours. This was a, uh, this was very, uh, the longest, I think it's the longest. The longest yeah, longest I think this is the longest yeah. I've ever seen him sit down. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, like losing my shit, shit sitting still. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 if you saw that horrible stool I'm sitting on, it's terrible. That's oh, true. Man. I have the I have the fancy chair that I I did offer. This shit feels like it was 30 minutes. I'm not gonna lie. Um, For real. I usually just get on it and then I run. They asked me like two questions and it's like it's over. We love oh. Kevin. He's like he's so easy. <laughs> I want to thank you guys again for tuning in, man. And, and, it, and was, it was really nice meeting you guys. Uh, hopefully, I didn't uh, like horrify you with my a little bit of uh, obnoxious satire. Yeah, it was pretty oh, nice. I, have to, I just have to be uh, yeah. fun. I really appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate I you, Jeremy. In a long time, like my face hurts. Jeremy, I want to give a shout out to Jeremy, man. Thank you so thank much you. for helping yeah. out with this. Fucking, you're the man, bro. Um, my pleasure, man. And you're in good hands with Jeremy, bro. He's fucking. Oh, uh, he's he's bro. he's got my back. Uh, he's wonderful. Yeah, man. So Thank you. you guys are awesome. I'm gonna put the uh, link in the description below to Thank you. Thank you very much for that information we talked about earlier. But you guys have a fucking wonderful night, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin McCurley and uh, Jeremy. What's your last name, Jeremy? Damn, Turgeon. Turgeon. Yeah. <laughs> and, and real quick, what's the instrument you fucking jam out on? I like. That. I'm a fan <laughs> of that. Trumpet, bro. Awesome. 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 We're going to be doing some of our little, my, my sense of humor in our music. We're going to be doing Ooh. some stuff. Yeah. Collaborations on the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh we're, yeah. We're, yeah. He's, 
<laughs> Boy, it's it's yin and yang with us on that shit. Very opposite sides. We can't wait to see what happens, bro. You guys are awesome. Okay, we'll be All right, guys. Everybody have a great Bye. night. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Whoop. <laughs> That's that under the book. Nuts. How you guys feeling, man? I was tired and hungry. I know, but I was hungry, but I, my wife made me spaghetti. I don't even know if I want to eat the meat. Maybe I'll just eat the noodles. I don't know how I feel about my whole life right now with food. I, I think we'll talk about it when we're off yeah, live. I want to go throw away all the cheese and dairy and milk in my fridge right now. Steven? Steven's uh, young as shit, but Steven, you should probably start not eating fucking fast food anymore. You should probably yeah. don't wait till you're 30 like me. I used to eat amazingly, and then... Forrest got to me, and now I got to uh, turn that around again. Shout out to everybody who tuned in tonight, guys. I want to fucking flex something real quick. So we finally got follow your Zoo Dream shirts, and we got the memorial look. Boom, hard as shit. Oh, yeah. So um, teaming up with uh, Desi Des, and we're gonna get some labels get going and whatnot. So we should be shipping those shirts out sometime next week. Um, and then we got the fucking hard ass Supreme editions, which uh shout out to uh Desiree for coming out with this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, it's my it, idea. <laughs> it was a it was a team idea we came up with, but we actually put it in play. It has the unfiltered reptiles logo on the backs, but we have those in black and white. So reach out to any of us if you guys want a shirt. Uh please don't be shy. Reach out to any of us. Uh, we have enough to give out. So um also, please uh, make sure you visit www.coldbloodedcafe.com for the freshest and the bestest. You already know the deal with that. Um, wait, where does Kevin get his rodents from? Do we? I think he breeds them. And he breeds them. Probably rodent pro. I'm assuming. Gotta understand, everybody we bring on here is leads, guys. These are all leads here. Okay, we, we want we want to take over the whole cold blooded you know, hopper mice, jumper mice. Like I fucking wait. love that. <laughs> Say that again. I'm pretty sure he called hopper mice jumper mice. <laughs> That's some old school shit right there. Like I've I'm never heard that before. The jumper mice. I never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> That's iconic, man. I mean, he uh, said that, and that's all I could think of. Is I'm like, you're talking about hoppers? Well, sure. I can't believe, like, just the that whole. That was going to be my uh, wrap up question if you asked me to ask him one. Yeah, he ra he wrapped it up himself. He was like, all right, I'm done. So I'm I was done. like, well, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for the four hour mark, but yeah, you know what? I, mean, I think that was enough of a podcast. Yeah. Oh, that was. 45, that's solid. Cons I mean, considering the, the consistency we've been putting out the last fucking, I don't know. Three, four, five, six, seven podcasts. We're we're putting out the heat, man. This, this is a, and it's not stopping. Next week, gonna be fire. Week after that, it's gonna be fire. We got, like, dude, we're, it's just uh, it's not gonna stop. Hell no. So, um, shout out to everybody tuning in tonight. All the comments, everybody who was there. We got. Yeah, we hit a record. Like we hit a record, man. This is awesome. But these are like true ride or dies, man. We didn't pay for these viewers, like uh, Kevin was saying. Well, a lot of people. <laughs> You know what I mean? So make yeah. sure you follow, uh, follow us on Instagram and all that good stuff um, in the information description below. Do you guys have anything before we sign off? Any of you? That was awesome. We already disclosed that, Stephen. Do you have anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Cold Water Cafe at $30 fire shipping. Buy them!